We don't have a name for this thing yet, do we? No, it's got it. You get to make it up. Uh, no, I'm not creative. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired, guys. <laughs> I'm oh, so let's tired. go. Um, this is gonna be an hour. This is gonna be <laughs> the gonna shortest. Be so yeah, it's gonna be. So I have so short. little to say about this movie. The, the oh, seven, God, I know. The seven solo. So, oh shit. Uh, There's six of us. Then. There's six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Han is with us in spirit, <laughs> right? Good Han. Yeah. Not this shitty one. Um, okay. All right. I'll, I'll get this going. The six Kessel Runners. <laughs> oh, we, I think we talked about calling ourselves the Sinister Six, right? Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll go with that for this one. I think every time we'll just call it something different. Yeah. But I mean, there's not actually six of us. That's well, we fine. should save that for Venom. Yeah. No, oh, we should. <laughs> oh, the one film that might be worse than this we can look forward to this year. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. I'll get this. I'll get this goddamn thing Or going. the long one. What? The podcast of. Uh, novice Tim, Frank, and Novice talk two worlds. Is that what it's? Called? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to try and come up with the name again off the top of my head. So, welcome to the latest crossover episode featuring Tim Talk, the Novice of Frank, the podcast two worlds. Cameron, what's the, what did you call it? Uh, the the podcast of Tim, Frank, and Novice talk two worlds. Well, there we go. But we're not talking two worlds. We're talking solo. A Star Wars story, a.k.a. should have been Lando, a Star Wars story. Mm-hmm. Oh, guys, it's who here is excited about this? Yay. Mm-hmm. Who's here? Who's, Who's here? here? <laughs> yes. I know. We, uh, oh, as was just pointed out, we came very close to actually having a solo representative from each <laughs> podcast. It would have been that good. But fucking Cameron had to show up. I, I'm sorry, guys. God damn it. Ruining the bit. I, yeah. I was, you know, that's what I do. Well, but <laughs> both, uh, both the Tim Talk boys are here. I am Chris Lord from Tim Talk. I'm Cameron Dexter. And other people are here, too. That's right. I am the Frank of the Novice and Frank, our lovely and talented Amanda Barnes. Not with us. Oh, it, it hurts. I know. Yeah. She was too busy going to Santa Fe uh, to eat spicy food and meet family. Boo. To go see Solo. Well, I, I think the better Boo. way of phrasing it is she was too busy doing good things in the world to go and see Solo, and so that she was unable to join. <laughs> Uh, and I'm uh, Trevor Reese from uh, the podcast of Two Worlds, and Chris Fembrez is not with me because he was too busy working to see Solo. Uh, he is oh. actually in Solo as we speak. Oh, okay. So he will be watching Solo as we're doing this podcast. So he'll be here for the last, like, five minutes. No. <laughs> he'll be here for none of it. <laughs> but I'll, I can assume what he'll say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now paint me a picture of uh, Chris all of a sudden finds out his work schedule is not a, 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 enabling him to see this when it first opens. Is he devastated or he's like, eh, whatever? I mean, I had yesterday off and was planning on seeing it, and I chose not to. Like, I saw it today. <laughs> I saw it a few hours ago. Wow. I literally. Oh, so you're like, still in that post movie glow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could have seen it at like at four o'clock and really pushed it. You could. Because it's just like, all right, I got to see this because of the podcast. But I probably, like, I wouldn't have seen this movie, I don't think. Really? I like So yeah, let's let's get into uh, to first impressions. Well, uh, not, or short summaries, well, whatever we put it. Like I'm glad I like I didn't hate it, but my impression of it going in would have prevented me from going to see it. Hmm. Like that's not reflective of how I felt about it. Like I felt it was fine, it existed, and I've enjoyed the time I spent in that world. But yeah, I don't know if I would have how actively I would have seen this in the theaters. And is it because of the recasting of Han? Is it because of the troubled what? production? It's... Is it because of just Star Wars fatigue? Or is that a combination of everything? It's just sort of, like, it's not Star Wars fatigue. It's not the behind-the-scenes stuff. It's really just, like, what was presented to me. Like, mm-hmm. the yeah. footage shown, the the vibe they were going for, and then ultimately the finished product. Like, because I was seeing it as, like, you have t- this movie has two hurdles, should it exist is the first one. And and then like is it good enough uh to like be like fill in the gaps of Han Solo? So it's like I don't like I think it proved that it should exist, but I don't know if it proved any necessity to it. If that makes sense. No, I, I would agree. I mean I I guess if you had to look backwards upon the the, the franchise and pick a character you could do something with that is well known, I think Han would probably be one of the most likely choices, because he does at least. I mean, you don't want to see Luke or Leia, but you don't want like I'm, a Harvest Moon movie featuring Uncle Owen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. I'd, that, I'd watch milk. it. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see every time that they go to make dinner and it just comes out a little bit burnt as a foreshadow <laughs> to where their lives are going. Yeah. yeah, I've almost got it, Owen. I've almost got yeah. it. 
Damn it, Brew, you burnt the Wampa again. <laughs> it's just the honeymooners, basically. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> One of these days, Brew. Uh, I mean, I felt it was just fine. I watched it, and then I was like, all right, and then left. There, I mean, as we talk about more, there are some parts that just like, why? Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, no, I, I, Trevor, I agree with you. Like, I think, oh, actually, well, Frank, I actually agree with both of you. I, you know what? I never un quite understood why this movie existed. But I can see where they were coming from. But the one thing that gave me hope all the way through, I guess actually not all the way through to a point, was Lord and Miller. Because they are the guys who you give something to when it shouldn't work on paper. Like look at the Lego movie, for example. Like that yeah. should have been the most obvious, just cash grab toy tie in movie, and it actually had genuine heart and was clever and inventive and fun, as pretty much all of their other stuff has been. Mm -hmm. And I think there are parts of this movie you can see is their influence more so than than Ron Howard's. Um, but yeah, it, it, I never thought it should exist in the first place. They gave me hope. As soon as they were gone, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really generic. Did and they then... give you a new hope? They did. Ooh. They did. <laughs> no, I think it was the, they never gave you the new hope. You only That's had the true. initial hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a newer hope. <laughs> Compare this to Justice League. Do you see the seams as much <clears throat> in this film as you do in the Justice League between Whedon and Snyder? No, I see it more or less breaking down by act or maybe by like sequence. I think that the um, the whole section when they're on Kessel and then the Kessel run, I think that's pretty much all Lord and Miller for, for two reasons. One being that that's the most um, visual effects heavy section of the film, which I think would have been the hardest part to go and rewrite, though it would probably have been the furthest into shooting going in. But on top of that, in terms of the tone, like that's the one part where everything's a little bit brighter, a little bit higher energy, or just even the whole section where L3 accidentally starts a robot revolution. Totally, that's completely different everything that's going on. That feels very Lord and Miller to have this weird random thing. It's almost a little bit Spielbergian, or like Rube Goldberg-esque in terms of how it's like escalating and happening in the background as they're doing something else and they eventually collide together. That all felt very them. Um, like that had some of the, the more funny moments all the way through. Even the design of the Falcon, the fact that it's this iteration is much more colorful and bright compared to the whole rest of the movie, which is like mm -hmm. has this really just dry, boring, dark tone to it, that also feels Lord Miller. Like it was their choice to design the ship that way. And that's one of the things that's left intact from their original vision. I see it closer. I don't see it as much as like the Justice League connection is more of like the Ant-Man connection where you can clearly oh, see okay, yeah. what's Edgar Wright and what was rewritten. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, it's like you can only, I can only tell that it was Ron Howard when Clint Howard was on screen. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, oh. I know Ron Howard shot this part. For sure. That's I'm, all I can say. Like, that was, yeah, that was it, all it, Lord it, Miller, because they're big, <laughs> they're, 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 they're yeah, big they're Clint, huge Howard Clint Howard fans. Howard fans. <laughs> but no, like, I, I can see that. Like, yeah, there's definitely a, a shift in tone, but it, it is sort of like up and down throughout yeah. that, like, it's hard to really pin down exactly what's what because it, it almost it felt like literally they could have takes from lord and miller could have been integrated with ron howard's mm -hmm. stuff um because i think ron howard is a generic like you said like he's a generic uh film director yeah. that i think his stuff could just be moved in in the and uh and not really hinder anything that had happened before i think he's enough of a journeyman director to know like all right, I can work. I, I'll, I'm not going to cost the studio more money than we already have to in reestablishing the tone that they want. That he could have figured out a way to utilize the footage that they'd already come up with. Yeah, I could see that. I just, I, he's, look, I love Apollo 13. Yep. I think that film is a masterpiece. It is one of my all time favorite movies. But actually, in a lot of ways, you think about that movie, how much that is really Ron Howard, or how much that was a combination of a great script, a great story great acting, and then it falling in that perfect window of effects where it was parts that were cutting-edge CGI, but a lot of it was still practically done. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I th I'd say that's probably the peak and the and the, the, the eventual come down to him being a generic director. Yeah. Because, like, well, the 80s... Rush the, is pretty good. Yeah, like, there's a, good, lot, there's a lot like, of stuff in the 80s that's, like, really, like, fun and poppy. Like, he, he basically helped launch Michael Keaton's career with, like, Gung Ho and Night Shift... Um, and so, like, there was fun stuff. Like, Ron, Ron Howard is a good director, but now he's he went like bloated Spielberg before and S Lucas, yeah, before either of those guys did. I just I don't see any like film schools having a class on the oeuvre of There's Ron Howard. There's a master Howard. class <laughs> yeah. on Ron Howard. Oh, is it just how to take any personality out of your project? Yeah, <laughs> but I don't think he's. I mean, given that if they wanted to get rid of Lord and Miller, 
I don't know, like, what other director you could bring in where the cast would be like, oh, fuck this guy. I don't know everybody's there saying, like, fuck Ron Howard. We're like, oh, Ron Howard, all right. That's mm-hmm. cool. He's we'll got pedigree. It. Yeah. So you, you feel confident. But yeah, I don't think he's bringing, he's not reinventing the wheel in anything he's doing. So I, I have a question for you guys. Whose fault do you think it was for the, uh, I guess your name is Solo line? Oh, no. God. Who 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 do we blame? George for that? Lucas. Because no, <laughs> Lucas. I, like, cause I mean, like, this is a world where like the main character's name is Skywalker. Right. Like, yeah. there there is no way George Lucas thought that it was that. He thought his name was Han Solo because it should be. Yeah, yeah. that's just his name. Actually, I think there was a deleted scene from A New Hope where we meet Luke and some guys like, "Oh, how'd you get here?" It's like, "Oh, I get, I flew here." Oh, I mean, you just like walked along what the are, sky. What are your dreams, kid? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah. What are your dreams, kid? I wanna, I wanna be a part of the stars. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna walk the sky. I wanna walk across the sky. And I would feel uh, sky. And also, the Empire did that. No, no, yeah. it's so. Mm. I wouldn't. I, it, the fact that it's Lawrence Kasdan writing the script, that, I mean, Eddie, who has such a connection with the franchise already, that he puts that scene in there, I'm like, oh, come on, he, really? He went old man. Like, I think what's most emblematic of the movie that was in store for me was the the Jurassic World preview in front of it. Like, it's just, it's, it's, those, these movies are looking at the wrong stuff. It's like, I didn't give a shit where Han got his gun. Yeah. Or that I needed to know that Solo was some... Monarch given to him, and not just his initial given last name. Just like I want to, I want to see the the adversity. I honestly just like I want to be like Kira and just have a smile on my face while Han Solo is just on an adventure. Yeah, this like, was that's a movie what I want. meant for the fans that should have come out twenty years ago, straight to DVD or straight to VHS. Yeah, it was like because this... that's that's all it was. It was just everything the fans have been asking for. For thirty years of like, oh, his blaster. Where did he get that from? Oh, the dice we saw six months ago. Where did he get those from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> did anyone like? I think I'm sure we talked about this in the Last Jedi. But again, did anyone notice the dice even existing in these movies before Last Jedi? No, I think no. it was. But it's just set dressing, right? Were they even in the original movies? I don't remember them. Not that I recall. I'm sure. They, I mean, we're going to sure get it. Have to be. We're going to yeah. get a, re- a re-release. We're going to get a lot of new, close-ups. <laughs> a new true. new special edition. <laughs> yeah. The extra special edition. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a lot of cutting. It's gonna. It's yeah. gonna start it's gonna... close up on the dice, and it's gonna zoom out. It's like punch it, <laughs> and it's gonna zoom in again, and then that's gonna be the the hyperspace like animation is the zoom in on the dice. <laughs> But like God. even that whole sequence makes no sense where if he's running for what seems his life at the beginning of the film, that he's going to take time to throw up those dice. Like, no, 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 you just want to hightail it out of whatever particular yeah. situation you're in. Mm-hmm. That's, but no, we got to get the dice to make sure like, oh, yeah. Like that's not something that Han Solo would do. Like he, the whole point Nothing is, in this movie is what Han Solo would do. That's true, absolutely. Yeah, like, except I have a theory. shooting I have Woody a theory. Harrelson. Yeah, this, that was, <laughs> that yeah, was he what shot first. Han Solo would so, do. Hey. Here's my theory. Shot Woody. I don't think this is the same Han Solo that we see later. I think the Han Solo in the later films <laughs> took this Han Solo's identity. That's why he doesn't And go- Chewie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the Millennium Falcon. Yes, And exactly. his blaster. Mm-hmm. And his dice. Yeah, so here's the thing, because there's that crazy, stupid theory of two, the two Luke theory. Have you oh, guys heard of this bullshit theory? I, what? I vaguely that heard there's, reference. There's, uh, because I guess like the, the stuntman for, uh, for Mark Hamill was like an inch taller than him. And so there's scenes where he's, com- like, where he's standing next to Han and you can tell the height difference. <laughs> so there's this stupid, crazy-ass Jesus fan Christ. theory called the two Luke theory. <laughs> there's two Luke Skywalkers. Because the Star Wars fan base is, is horrible right now. <sighs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend that. Paul there's is dead. two Hans. Paul is dead. Yes, <laughs> there's two Hans. And this is Han 1, and Han 2 is is what we get in the later films. It's <laughs> two Lobos. This is the yeah. two Lobos yeah, the two situation. Lobo. But, so, like, this two Luke theory, they're saying that every scene where the, the height is different, like, it's the, a Luke's different have, Luke. yeah. the Luke's have swapped places. Like, <laughs> yeah. So there's another Luke running around doing something while no. this other Luke is standing there? Yeah. Not, swap? That, that's literally the, whole, that's literally what? the theory. Yeah. Man, somebody well, th- took time to come up with a stupid... That is so stupid. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> it's, I was just watching like a Rick and Morty like theory video like on YouTube. I was just like bored. Just, you know, YouTube rabbit hole. Um, and it was talking about that. I'm like, that's a plausible theory. That's garbage. You're too Luke, too Han thing. Oh, yeah, it is. But <laughs> also at the same time, it's just like... This, this the too Han theory has some, has some backbone to it, though. Rationalize some shit. Has more substance. Than the two Luke theory, yeah. Um, 
God, yeah. But it comes off as like one of those, the you know, back in the heyday of the the Star Wars novels, where it's like Tales from Mos Eisley or mm-hmm. Tales of the Bounty Hunter, where it's just mm-hmm. all these writers like pouring in all their backstory and thoughts and ideas about what these little random bits and characters and elements have uh, in the Star Wars universe. You're like, oh, like, do I care where Han, why the, he has a red blood stripe on his pants? Mm-hmm. There's a story for that, if you guys want to know. Well, they're saving that for a sequel. Yeah, because there's def- they definitely he's, set up for a sequel. Yeah, he's going to get which his is vest. even worse. <laughs> Next time. Yeah. That's, I want that to be the whole plot. I honestly wanted that to be the post credit scene, was, was, oh, him, was I, him getting the vest. And like, I, <laughs> like, it wouldn't even be a story. It'd be like them at the, at the cantina, and he's like, all right, Chewie, let's go. And he just like grabs the wrong vest, <laughs> and Greedo just like looks at him. Coming back for you, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. That's my vest. I, I don't Get know. ready for Duo, the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's what's the first scene of the second movie is they're going to be going through airport security somewhere. Airport security, mind you guys, in the yeah, Star Wars yeah. universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be him and Chewie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys are a duo now. He asked for whiskey or bourbon. No. Uh, what? Beckett did. He asked for Woody, bourbon? Woody Harrel- he asked for like whiskey or bourbon Are at the sure bar. sure that wasn't just Woody Harrelson I think that was talking. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, no, that means yeah, it could have been. realizing the camera was rolling. Yeah, no, but he asked for like bourbon. It's just like, come on. Wait, that like, was, I missed that. He actually asked for bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He asked for like bu- bourbon or whiskey, but he asked for like a legit like alcohol. So now you make me almost want to go watch this again just to prove that's a real thing. Like, <laughs> it's a real I, thing. I, I, I swear. No I interest. saw it. I'm still in the glow. He's, yeah, you uh, see the you see his face uh, shining. But here's here's the thing. Like the last, basically all the movies of that Disney has put out have, in their own way, reminded you of what the Star Wars movies are supposed to be about. The uh, Force Awakens is about grand adventure, the political drama of Rogue One, the like returning to the mysticism and crazy bonkers fantasy of Last Jedi, and the gangster element of Solo, mm-hmm. and especially those last two are like really the main tenets of what Star Wars are is like this bonkers space fantasy and it's populated by like gangsters and villains and neither of them have really delivered on either of those promises no it just reminded you of oh this is how cool Star Wars can be and should be but neither movie have really delivered that well I feel like it's like Star Trek where they've spent so much time now looking backwards whether it be in the the movies with the reboot or the, especially the TV show mm-hmm. with, Star Trek Discovery and they keep going back younger and younger where it's like I maybe Disney needs to see how well Ryan Johnson's new trilogy does mm-hmm. before they believe like okay we can tell a lot more stories that are divorced of this and can be set sort of present day yeah. in the Star Wars I don't wanna, I like yeah if this this would have been a much cooler movie had Han Solo not been in it like yeah. it would have been like a Lando, a Lando <clears throat> yeah, it was a Lando movie or even like that. just Beckett just him and his crew with yeah. Tanny Newton and uh John Favreau's character, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and even yeah, maybe yeah, get Rogue Alan, One style. yeah, Lando yeah. and L three, but yeah, it would yeah, maybe that's why Rogue One really has been the best of these four movies, uh, like because it's it's the one most divorced of the original. Yeah, it's, source it's material. a tangent. Like yeah. you, you see its connection, but it doesn't have to be there. Yeah, it really is a Star Wars story more so than this one is. Mm-hmm. Well, just, what I was really hoping for out of this was a genre film. Like, I was hoping that Star Wars had started to learn a bit of lesson from Marvel and decided to, like, okay. Yeah, we're they learned gonna... the wrong lessons. They always <laughs> learned the wrong fucking lessons. Like, I really wanted this. Like, if this movie had been Ocean's Eleven but set in the Star Wars universe, I would have been that totally been amazing. on board. Or, like, maybe, like, like Butch casting the Sundance Kid well, even the... sort of thing. Like, again, I would have been totally on board for it. But it, it was – most of it was just so generic. It wasn't doing any of that. Well, Woody was saying that, like, he based – either it was Woody Harrelson or, like, Ron Howard or the director's – but, but they were saying, like, Beckett is basically the Long John Silver. Um, like, basically oh, put, yeah, putting this yeah. as, like, Treasure Island. Yeah. It's like, that would have been cool. Like, yeah, I see what you're saying, like, with, like, the yeah, rogue. Disney and, like, saw how yeah, have, like, a heist. Treasure, Treasure Island went Treasure last Planet time is an amazing film. It's it is underrated. so good. It's, it's really so good. good. Treasure Planet's awesome. This would have been called Treasure Planets. But no, but, like, yeah. have, like, Treasure that Treasure cool, Planet, yes. like, cool, sexy heist vibe, but set in a more... Because this is, this is an... A naval world, mm-hmm. like that's what that's the thing you kind of forget about like space stuff is that it's more navy than uh, 
than like Air Force or whatever like that. Like you have to kind of think of it as like you're sailing the ocean of the stars mm-hmm. sort of thing. And it would have been cool if it was more like like the first thing that Lando calls in the original trilogy is yo pirate. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's I would have loved it to see a little bit more pirate, a little bit more like rogue sort of like where are the eye patches? Yeah, put on some. <laughs> Where's the peg legs? <laughs> yeah, like pull from like some uh, get like Gore Verbinski, like, we got, like uh, we got Pirates of the Caribbean there, yeah. inspiration, kind of like having yeah. like that sort of world, like. It was like probably the cool sequence is the going on to um, Paul Bettany's sex cruise. <laughs> like that was probably like one of the cooler sequences because it shows it shows something different in Star Wars, but we know can't exist in Star Wars, which is just again like the cool higher end. Like both movies have been like, hey, let's show how the higher end lives. Let's show how the one percent lives in Star Wars universe. But this one was cool because it had like that sexy um, alien singer with the cool. Yeah, like, the, voice the creature oh, design yeah. was cool. Yeah, like, but it was like, I would have rather, like, yeah, more rogue stuff. Mm-hmm. More, like, sexy criminal stuff. Well, yeah, that that would have been fun. Yeah, to do something, just spend some... I wanted less exposition. This movie was, felt like I had to explain a whole bunch of stuff. I really yeah. just wanted an adventure. I think it missed what makes Han such an interesting character, which we don't know that much about him. If we just got to spend more time with him... Just being himself, it would have been fine. But like, we had to do all this exposition, all this setup, and I felt like, and I felt like they set him up in the wrong light. Oh, completely the wrong way. Because when we meet him, he's an outlaw, but in this movie, they're like pushing him like, oh, but he's an outlaw with a heart of gold. I'm like, no, the whole first movie, he was doing everything for himself, like, and then and- Luke and and Obi Wan in his experience going through the Death Star to rescue Princess Leia is what ultimately changes him and brings him into the rebellion. Well, I, I assume it was more of like, oh, my lady kissed another guy. I gotta, I gotta stay and prove. Yeah, myself. no, that's what that's what Solo did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what this bullshit was. But yeah, no, like that's this movie, like all the oh, big so narrative. Start on the seven layers of backstabbing. The big, yeah, oh, the God, big layer yeah. of uh, of narrative. For him is the Star Wars. Like we've seen his narrative. That's a great way to see him. But like none of this is just I don't know. It's just bullshit. Mm-hmm. I feel like his character should not have had an arc in this movie. Like I feel like it. She should have just been a more or less a fixed character playing in a larger space where other characters around him had more of an arc going on and they had more like trajectory because that's what he was always was to begin with. He was never less like, the focus point. I feel like they tried to make him. Uh, Peter Quill. Oh, and that was the mm-hmm. like he's he's you know he's not completely good, but he's sassy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got an alien partner. Yeah. <laughs> well, even at the end where he calls uh, whatever the, uh, the our, our young rebellion at. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I hey kid, and I'm like really nest. something nest. Yes, uh, but Elliot like, Nest. Lock Elliot Nest. nest. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, but like. Calling your kid like, oh, now he's become Han Solo. Now, yeah, yeah. now he's yes. aged. <laughs> That's right. I, and I feel like he did so much kissing in this movie. It's like, eh, all right, I don't know if I need to see my Harrison Ford just smooching so much. I mean, that 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 wasn't as much a Han callback as a Harrison Ford callback. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I will watch Harrison Ford smooch for days. That's right. But I'm sorry, Alden Ehrenreich, it's not, it's not working. Mm-hmm. It's not working. The yeah. Same so, level. so let's go. Let's go through the cast because we had a lot of people to talk about. Okay. I mean, should. We... Should we just get it out of the way now and say that Alden Ehrenreich is terrible? I, you know, I don't know if he was terrible. I, like, I didn't ever watch it and say, like, I hate this guy on screen. But, I mean... I, I don't hate him on screen. He just had no charisma, which is the whole defining character trait of Han Solo. Very true. Yeah, yeah and, like, with especially with, like, Lando just living it up right next to him. Yeah. And seeing... That like Donald Glover took what Billy J. Williams laid as the foundation in the first two movies, and then built upon that. Uh, yeah, it was just like yeah, Donald Glover like should have been the anchor of this film, yeah. but instead he's a side character, and he was a, he outshone the star of the film. Yeah, everyone yeah. outshone the star of the yeah. film. Though I would be curious with that, like because I mean certainly in the first marketing he wasn't that prominent, but then I when everyone word? realized. I, with uh, Lando and Donald Glover, but I think once they realized, like, whoa, yeah, people are really responding to this, and they really push him to the front. That after I watched the movie, I was like, oh, he really wasn't as much as I would have hoped for. Mm-hmm. So now I need to see a Lando film. Definitely a Jared Leto Joker situation. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. just like now you're at the forefront of our marketing, but we don't have the footage to back it up. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. 
Um, yeah, like, and also like L three. Like, I'm getting tired of them creating kick ass robots who die in the prequels, and we don't get to see oh, more K2SO. of them. K two S O. Yeah, K two S O. And now L three. Mm-hmm. Th- they've been like killing it with these side story droids. Like, I wish. Like, I don't know. I'm getting I'm annoyed with it. I'm and I think they more. introduced a very interesting thing that I would love for them to dive in more, and that's the like the droid uh, lockout chips. Uh, oh, the, restraining uh, the restraining bolts. Yeah, the restraining the bolts. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's like that. See, that's something that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's more like the, the the thought process that created that is more of what I want to see, which is it's a throwaway thing in uh, especially in, it's only th- like I think the first two we really see. Oh no, all three of the original ones they have like restraining bolts. Do they? Like, because yeah. R two D two and Luke have them, or uh, and C three PO have them when they're sold to the uh, by the Jawas to Luke. Yeah, because Luke takes the oh, one off R two, um, which allows but him then to I don't think and that, yeah. that allows him to run away. That's and right. I don't think okay. Empire does, but I mean C three PO gets destroyed in that. But then yeah, when they're in Java's service, they both have restraining bolts. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, but that's but then it's like sh- sort of showing like well, like what is the actual like real life. Uh, like version of that. What does that look like in the day to day of this world? Mm-hmm. Like similar with like how Rogue One sort of showed like the actual military living of like the Empire occupying a space. Mm-hmm. Like that was cool. Like those are the kinds of things I want to see more of and expanded on, rather than like how Han Solo got his blaster and where the dice came from and why he's named Han Solo. I want to see more like expanding the social. Um, uh, implications of various uh, ideologies or various thoughts from the Star Wars universe and expanding upon that than just, like, the bullshit that they're choosing to do. Yeah, or even, like, because, I mean, obviously we have Finn as the stormtrooper turned good, mm-hmm. but Han well, joins the Empire and then immediately quits. But that's the, cool, too. Like, I would have liked to know, like, that would that's an untold reason of why he really locked on to Finn. Yeah, because Han too is a, is an Empire deserter, mm-hmm. and so like that's something that should have been like sort of dealt with, like him, like I deserted the Empire, like I want something better, or I don't want to just be de- going around destroying the world, go- destroying the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like sort of like that would have been something cool to even know going into Force Awakens. Here, here, here's my new pitch for the movie because I like that idea. I want this to be the Hobbit style, where. <laughs> The well, opening, three movies, the, three three movies. super movies. long movies. The opening of the movie is like present day Star Wars, and it's Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher um, divorcing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's when they're signing the papers. Yeah, and he's like cleaning the die, and then he looks, <laughs> and then then the movie is the flashback, <laughs> all about the dice, or it's like when he sees Finn, and then it's yeah, it's the story of like him being a deserter and then being a deserter, and then it ends with with his death scene again. <laughs> yeah. Actually, well, that, that's what this movie that should have been. That actually like, would have been cool. No, like, what it, what it, like, it should have opened with the lightsaber going into him, <laughs> and then we go into his eyes, and we get to relive his whole life. <laughs> yes. Well, it's like, what's the, the robot chicken Star Wars, where it's uh, the Emperor gets thrown off, and then it like freeze frames oh, and plays, yeah. um, uh, I forget what the song is. I, I want to say it's, uh, it's the equivalent of like um, that Talking Heads song. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, there's someone who's listening who knows exactly what song I'm talking I'm about. Sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, something like that, just sort of like in days like this. <laughs> <laughs> you might be wondering how I got here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I know. That he, I'm sure you guys have read a lot on my the best friend tried to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody talking about L3, where after she gets yeah, shot. She basically just gets her navigational system, and I don't know how much of her consciousness or programming gets put into the Falcon, though. Mm-hmm. What did you, know, you see? The are you talking about the Empire a little bit? Or, it... or yeah, everybody talking about like you know like why do they do this to this character? Now they just kind of made her just like a a slave. That's the you know they 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 torment oh, her. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Shit. Yeah, people were getting really on about like the the treatment of L three, where you take this character that had a really cool, interesting arc and story potential, and then you just uh, just trapped her within a, a ship. Well, the thing that I saw, and again, stuff like this is what I like, is um, they mentioned, there's this throwaway line for uh, Empire Strikes Back when C-3PO's interfacing mm-hmm. with the uh, with the Falcon Navicomputer. 
And it's like, you're, I don't know how, where your system learned to communicate like this, but it's very odd. I've never seen yeah. it before. So here's, oh, here's pitch two for re-release. They're going to remake that scene, but you're actually going to have the voice of L3 talking to C-3PO. <laughs> Phoebe Waller-Bridge <laughs> is yeah. coming back. I'd be down for that. I loved her. Yeah, mm, she, she was like, so much fun. And Kate, like, I'm just so sick of like, B, like I'm BB-8. Like so far, the droids have been the characters I've consistently loved in the Disney Star Wars films, well, and that's problematic. I think we can also probably acknowledge that. Let's be perfectly frank. You are always frank. Oh, but in gosh, this gosh. moment, we're going to be we're perfectly all frank. frank. We're all frank right all now. Um, we're all solo. Let's be honest. <laughs> R two and three PO aren't that great of characters. R two is C three PO sucks. But like. But I mean, R two is a lot of fun, but not having a voice that limits him a little bit. But like, that like makes... Chewbacca, yeah, so, ass. <laughs> so finish the point. Then I want to make a point about Chewbacca. But like, I think that you know those characters weren't gr necessarily great. I think they worked right in the original trilogy. They shouldn't have been included in the prequels, obviously. But I think now they like they're leaning a little bit heavier and actually giving them kind of personality, which is is cool. I'm, I'm happy to see them giving mm -hmm. droids more to do. And like L three actually had her own little mini arc. Too. She got to like live. She like got to find her purpose by freeing all the droids before she was killed, and then yeah, basically just became a, a, a slave, slave to mm -hmm. a yeah. spaceship. That's true. So, so quick note on Chewbacca, and this is something that's never bothered me in the Star Wars franchise ever until this movie, and it's because and it's it's the idea that every alien species and every droid except BB-8 and R2 get subtitles slash translations. In this movie, Chewbacca is the only character that doesn't get translations. Not only that, but someone uh, Han speaks Wookiee and gets translations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get that. But oh, yeah, that didn't they? Mm -hmm. And it's it's the idea that like they just use Chewie for like a boring punchline of like you can't say that. I'm like, don't. That's not a, that's not well, a joke. That's that's they're turned him into Groot. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you kiss your mother with your with that mouth, like sort of thing. Like that's mm -hmm. what they're gonna do. It's gonna be all reaction shots. Whereas in the first, in the original trilogy, like Chewbacca was an actual full character. Mm -hmm. Even if you couldn't understand him, like Han would just react, and his lines would be in such a way that you understood what Han or what Chewie was saying. Yeah. And then on on the Chewie note, really quick, just just jumping through the char the character reel, um, we always assumed that he had like a life debt to to Han, and that's yes. why he stayed with him. We saw that like his his tribe is free, Han like he helped Han. Han helped him. I don't really see the life debt anymore. Well, I, I think one. I don't think that was actually his tribe per se. Just I, mean, a I, tribe. I guess, it, I guess they it were Wookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because they're also Wookies, he was helping them out. But I mean, I agree that. I guess I assumed it implies here that the life debt was by rescuing. Chewy, I guess, but kind of like saved each other. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a good point. Like they never really justify. He kind of, Chewy seems to go back because he likes him, but not because he really feels indebted to him. True. It, it doesn't match up anything that I'd always heard growing up about why these two had such a strong connection. Mm -hmm. So when you're seeing this play out, you're like, okay. really, all yeah. five movies that have appeared, um, but like prior to A New Hope, uh, like have done nothing to really strongly answer any of the cool questions I had watching the initial trilogy. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, why are Han and so uh, Han and Chewie such best friends? They must have this crazy, they must have gone on crazy adventures before they even met Luke and uh, Obi-Wan. Or, like, I didn't need to know that it was a trap to for the exhaust port, and I didn't need to know about midi-chlorians, and I didn't need to know about all this stuff. Like, it's just like any movie set before New Hope just has done a terrible job. George Lucas and Disney are, like included in that which is crazy like, because i feel like every other medium handles that so yeah. well like the clone wars that was not what i pictured the clone wars being when i was mm -hmm. a kid yeah. yeah yeah so so that was that that was another point i wanted to make this movie i wanted this movie to be an hour and a half animated feature or not feature an hour and a half animated like spin-off of rebels or of clone wars True. Like well, if, but, if dave floney had been over, overseeing it i bet People would have been more pleased with the final yeah, result. He does good stuff, mm -hmm. but especially when they bring in fucking Maul out of nowhere. Ugh. Okay, yeah. Should we, <laughs> let's just jump to that because that was a uh, so, oof. I mean, it's not necessarily out of nowhere because you know he's been alive in the comic books and the in the cartoons. Well, mm -hmm. so but S Phil Coulson has been alive in the TV show Agents of Shield, and he has remained dead in the movies. Like yes. I get these side stuff has reestablished stuff. Boba Fett got out of the Sarlacc pit. Well, hooray. 
That's not what I saw in these movies. Well, I guess that's. What <laughs> I saw Darth Maul cut the fuck. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what my question is. Is so. I mean, I know this, and like Frank, you do as well. Like I've watched all the Clone Wars. I've watched mm-hmm. Rebels, so I know that character is still alive or was alive to a certain point, and how he got his robotic legs and how he became part of the underworld. I know this. And I was wondering why that's there. Who was that moment for? Because either you know it like we do, and I'm confused as to why they're bothering to include it, or you don't know about it. And you're like, didn't that guy fucking die? Because mm-hmm. uh, Jake Kasdan loves the character. And I was like, this would be cool, considering that he's also, because of Clone Wars and the uh, Rebels, that that character is viable and still around. That w- This would be an awesome mm-hmm. thing to uh, set up and, ha- and but, have a big reveal. But for the, for the audience, though, who's that for? Yeah, because yeah, we went... We the went kids. with our friend Shane, who's not like he's a Star Wars fan, but he doesn't watch the the series, the TV series, so he didn't know. And I don't think they did a good enough job showing that he had robot legs. True, because it was one sound effect, and that's the only way that I caught it. Well, uh, it it's like you could even like is this is Han so is like was Han sixteen in this, and this is actually like Phantom Menace, like a. Before, that was, that was like, the other yeah. question that, that Shane brought up. It's like, yeah, when does this take place? But we know at the beginning of the movie, they do say the Emperor, so we know it's at least after three. Yeah, the Imperial Army's around. And so he's mm-hmm. going to meet Jabba, uh, seems like, on Tatooine. And I'm sure he's got to do a series of some thing, adventures or heists for him that would eventually lend him getting into such debt that he's got this bounty placed on him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the one thing that he, he just, it's one shipment. He was yeah, good he, with oh, Jabba. He, he'd dump. Oh, yeah, and that's then he right. dumped a shipment. I was like, yo, man. Mm-hmm. You were so good. Yeah. It, <laughs> Negative and Greedo? That's Greedo? <laughs> Fucking Greedo. <laughs> but I guess that, that's the line that makes me feel like he's probably worked for him for a little bit. So there is a room between, I think, where we end this film yeah. where a new hope starts where you oh, could. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's not Rogue One where it's literally well, bumping into a new hope. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, would say, I would say there's five years, I five to ten years. I think ten. I think ten yeah. is what I've heard most consistently. But At most, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not a lot more than that. But so he's like he's like thirty three. He's like th- he's at least thirty in uh, Star Wars. That sounds about right, though. So he's ten years older than Luke and Leia. Um, I believe I don't, that. I don't think he's. Well, maybe yes, he is. Close They're to twins. Him. So they, they, they <laughs> have to be what? The same, what? The same age. <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna say their dad is Vader. Yeah, I guess. Wait, what? No, no, no. That's a joke. That's Wait, a joke. who's oh, it? Okay. <laughs> Because now I've only watched A New Hope. Yeah. <laughs> I've only watched the prequels. <laughs> I, so I, I had this weird... I, I couldn't tell if it was Jimmy our Smith. angle. Because we had... We yeah, were, where's Jimmy Smith in this? Come on. Give me some Jimmy. Uh, we had we were up close and kind of on the side. And so for me watching the movie, I feel like... I, I couldn't tell if it was the colors were off from our angle or if the colors were just that bad the whole movie. But when we first see Maul, he's shrouded with like a blue silhouette. And you see the horns, and I'm, and he's talking to the mother of dragons. I didn't see Maul. I saw a fucking White Walker <laughs> that she was talking to until the lightsaber lit up. And I'm like, oh right, this is not Game of Thrones. Well, I was I was talking to a friend like of the two people I wish they could have kept who created the original Darth Maul, Ray Park and Peter Serafinowicz. Keep Serafinowicz because Ray Park he has, he's a little rounder in the face. Mm-hmm. Like that was like it, he looked visibly aged too. It's just that, like he's supposed to be sexy young well, Jedi. He had his legs but cut he had off, his legs Trevor. Cut off. <laughs> yeah. He was like living in a trash heap for a long time. Yeah, I'm and sorry he didn't crazy. keep up so with his fitness be, routine when he, he lost his legs. be gaunt then? Well, but now he's like a big <laughs> he can't, shot. He's been out. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Here, he's been he, he's been eating so little, but he also can't poop out what. Yeah. Here's here's the new theory. Here's the new theory. Maul is actually Jabba, and he just let himself go oh, way too much. But it's, it's Sam Whitmer did the voice, and that's yeah. Sam Whitmer who did the voice of him in the cartoons. Yeah. I love Sam Whitmer, so mm-hmm. I was... I, was I, mean, I, I, I think Peter eh. Serafinowicz is a better choice, but I, mean, I love I Sam Whitmer. I like so. Sam Whitmer. I, I, met, so, I met him once in person. I didn't very realize nice. that. So they... Yeah, poor Ray Park, again, he just gets to show up for the face, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Doesn't yeah, even get poor, to do any cool martial arts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no martial arts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh-huh. was that just all sequel baiting? Was that why that so was I, there? I just thought about this. So what's the other prequel that everyone's been begging for? Obi-Wan. Is the Obi-Wan. And now that we have movie confirmation that Maul's still alive, they can lead that into well, a potential. But the problem, the pro- I, mean, I agree with that, but also the problem with that is they've resolved that conflict in, the in cartoons. Rebels. Like we, We've seen their final confrontation. So we but got a small we... window between... <laughs> Yeah, Solo and Rebels. 
Yeah. Well, that's that's part of the reason that's I was a sweet spot for that. Obi-Wan yeah. Wan they're gonna movie. need. They're gonna need to. If they're making, yeah, they need to make a line of the sand whether or not these cartoons are official, official well, canon. I mean, but they, I mean, they've pretty much already been clear that they yeah. are. But what I've been told, yeah, Lucasfilm addresses those as canon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, anything they're doing now, since even even if it's comic books or uh, novels yeah. or the cartoons, all canon. All new canon. So, I mean, and they, they have been, there have been teases of, kind of inclusion back and forth. Obviously, Saw Guerrero was the first animated character that was then introduced in live action. Um, we know that Harrison Dula is uh, at Yavin during the time of Rogue One. We see the ghost in the background. I mean, these are those are more Easter egg sort of things. But, I mean, they've made it pretty clear that these are all tied in yeah, together. Yeah, but, I mean, it's so. like, I don't... I was, I was about, I almost brought this up earlier, but it's just like, if I... I'm done with Star Wars by Disney if there is a mid or end credit sequence. The yeah. moment they do that, I'm done. I don't think they would. I don't think I, they But will. it's just like, but they're doing this stuff. They brought back Darth Maul, and they seem to be building a universe the same way Marvel is, that I feel like the executives and the people in charge of this franchise are now just the right conversation away from making these bad decisions. Like, just, this has to be presented the right way. But although when you see Darth Maul, especially your friend who wasn't aware of all that stuff, is he like, what the hell is going on? Or is he intrigued enough to like, I like, I want to go and find those episodes to see how he got brought back. No, no he didn't. He, he didn't had really no care. interest yeah. in going and watching okay. Rebels or. But yeah, also, he, he was there with us, and we kind of explained. Yeah, it explained for him. all the the history yeah, yeah. there. But it just that that moment was so bizarre, and it it was the first time that something in Star Wars felt sequel baity, which is kind of ironic when you think about the fact that Empire Strikes Back is like kind of the classic. I, I actually don't consider that a cliffhanger ending, but like most people recite that as like the classic cliffhanger second act ending. But that's a cliffhanger and not sequel. Well, based. that's the thing. That's this is, different. Yeah, I'd say is, that's a different case. This is the first time that Star Wars has felt sequel baity. Like something was put in there for no reason other than to set up possible future storylines, and it just felt so unnecessary. I, mean, I don't know who else you put in that position instead. I mean, why can't it be Jabba? I mean, I I kind of thought it was going to be someone related to the Empire. I thought that was going to be kind of the reveal, is that the Empire, even the Underworld, has some connections. And any character you picked would have felt like a little bit forced, especially with like Vader or something like that. But I still think that would have been an interesting idea of this idea. Like, even when we are often an area that's supposed to be separated from the Empire, you can't really escape them. They have their influence everywhere. That at least would have been more interesting than just this random resurrection. Like, I, I kind of wish that they would have done, like they got a lot of stuff from uh, uh, Shadow of the Empire. Like oh. I know that's, that's oh. the, that and like Heir to the Empire, like the initial like three book series um, after uh, Return of the Jedi, that and Shadow of the Empire, the two like biggest hits yeah. for losing like the extended universe. But like stuff like that could so easily be integrated. Like you have such a great, uh, Zyver or whatever is that? Oh, like, Caesar, oh yeah. right. Caesar, yeah. And like the the Black Sun, I think was mm-hmm. the name of it. Like that's cool. Like they they are like it's just annoying that they're just throwing out all this stuff because George Lucas came up with it and not them. Which is like you guys could just adapt this. Though I mean, you're willing to adapt all these cartoon bullshit. You could have gone back to stuff that actually had been established previously and made it canon. Like because that was really like the Black Sun, like Syndicate. That's a really cool thing. Zyzer's really cool visually. Um, it's just like annoying that they're they're so anti everything that's happened before this, like all the extended universe or now legends or whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. Um, that they're just like ignoring it completely is just frustrating. Well, it's not necessarily completely because they are bringing back Thrawn. He was brought back in, yeah. in Rebels. And I, so. in, in the, the really... cartoon bullshit yeah. that they're feeding. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> hang on. Look I'm, at you. I'm, For somebody who loves cartoons, you just hating on Star I'm, Wars. I'm gonna fight back. I'm I love back. Star Wars cartoons, but I don't love. The, I don't love when side stuff perpetuates continuity. Because I will say this: I think Rebels has been better than all of the live action content put out, and Clone Wars too. Like I said, most of Clone the Wars. The latter part of Clone Wars. Yeah. Yeah. When I it, mean, and even Gendy that... Tartakovsky's Clone Wars. Like that, well, like, but that was a masterpiece from that, the beginning. Yeah, that, that so. was... But it's like, it's like, that. I don't want... Kit like, I know oh, it's... Oh, what that's, a boy. that's the bullshit you sign up for, is you can't, you can't forward it in any sort of meaningful way, but you can find stuff like, uh, what's, uh, uh, Osaka. You can find stuff like that. Ahsoka? Ahsoka. Like, stuff to, to make your own and make it wholly of that property... 
but not have it impact in any way unless the film I don't know it's just it's just annoying like just all the stuff that now I have to like keep track of two full cartoon series now then to the degree of like Marvel never forces you to watch Agents of Shield or watch the Netflix stuff yeah. well, mm-hmm. I think I mean this is the only time they've done that though what if it had been Mace Windu I'm down <laughs> Mason would do die to the movies. I saw him. Well, we don't, I mean, no, we you saw... see him fly away. Yeah. You never see a body. <laughs> I see True. his arm get you, cut off. You saw, yeah. Mason, electrocuted you saw, you and... saw Maul get cut in half and fall down an infinite tube. And I hated it. True. So Ooh. what I'm saying is if Mace Windu showed up, I'd hate it. Because I'd also just be thinking, well, here's Nick Fury yeah. with the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> <laughs> so here, I, I have a question for, for the group. Because I enjoy this character that's now legend. But you made a good point of not wanting it to impact... The real story, the main story, is what do you guys think about Force Unleashed? If you guys played that oh, game. Oh, I love the first Force Unleashed. That whole story arc, the character, the game, have, have all you, of it. Have you all played of it? it. Uh, that, only a little bit, but it's like Vader's Apprentice. Yeah, Vader's Secret yeah. Apprentice, uh, who's like the most badass person. Played by Sam Witwer, right? Sam Witwer? Yeah. yeah. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, no, that, 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 that's fine. It'd be cool to see that i don't know it's just like whatever you brought up yeah you brought up the point of like the secret empire leading that like it'd, it'd be the same if, if it's mall but like if that was the the person running the underworld yeah that I would, would have made I, me happy as i would no i wouldn't want that character i wouldn't i wouldn't want them to force um star killer to oh, right, to yeah. fit into a, a totally different mold just because they want it and then it would feel very fan servicey. Then it would feel like this mall thing where it's like mm-hmm. that character and that story is great as it is. It'd be very hard to include it in the new canon. Maybe we could find a way, but to to throw him in in totally different circumstances feel like a waste. Like I I have read the the Thrawn. I mean, I read like the comic adaptation, but I thought they did a good job with him in Rebels. Um, I didn't feel like that would have been a waste. It would have been cool to see him in a film, but like at least it felt like it was true to his character. That would have bothered me if they had just like forced. But just imagine instead of the lightsaber popping up in front of his face, it would have popped up behind his back. I mean, that's the, that is the <laughs> cool, that is the coolest way to hold the lightsaber <laughs> behind you. This is a well established. So, did you ever play the games? Yeah, I played a little okay, bit of yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's also like the coolest way to light a lightsaber is in front of your face in darkness. That's true. That's the best way to light a lightsaber, mm-hmm. <laughs> but not to hold one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would, I don't know how you guys feel, because we talked, I mean, Tandy Newton and John Favreau's character, they're not around for very long, but I'd rather, I kind of, I wish there were, I had seen more of those guys in the film, yeah. except for John Favreau's really just annoying, kind of on the nose, uh, like, so tell me about, uh, you look like you're missing a girl, huh? Like, oh, oh it, if he would have told me he was two days from retirement, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> completely, <laughs> but like, he <laughs> felt like he was just, but yeah, she felt like she should have, like, Rogue One did, and like, gotten out in like, third act. Yes. Like, it was really weird that they cut her off really quick. Okay, I do want to talk about that. I'm going to pull, pull in that same thread that from the last episode with Deadpool. I was really bothered by the fact they introduced two female characters in this, including L3, and they killed both of them off just to serve. Oh, we're talking about Val. Okay. Yeah, just to serve male characters. Uh, they, I, I'd agree. They did it again. Mm-hmm. Definitely for Val. I don't know. L3, L3's stemmed from an active choice she made and starting the rebellion that she stayed back with. Her death did create an emotional moment for Lando, but I would say with with L3, she was she she got swept up in the revolution that she caused, and that was an act of choice that she made All outside right. of herself. I, I will give you that. But Val 100%. Yeah, but Val, I mean, and, Val 100% and, and like like Tandy no purpose. Newton, probably the Best actor in this entire film, and well, Woody. Let's go. Yeah, I, I, love, I love Woody Harrelson. <laughs> but I'm Let's sorry, like, Tan, Tandy Newton. It was Peter Mayhew. Yes, yeah, Chewie. Yeah, an incredible actor. The fact was that they Peter yeah. no, no, that's it's, the it's, new it's, guy it's, who was in. He was also. Well, I was in, hoping he was at least one of like the background Wookies from when the, so. from the escape. No. That's what I was hoping. No, what's the new guy's name? Like Jonas Jerkin yeah, I think it. it's, yeah, it's like three. Yeah. It's wow, he sounds perfect with all the umlauts and everything. I've alienated our entire Scandinavian <laughs> fan base. Um, yeah, just I I love Tandy Newton and, and just the fact that she would like just there and gone and I, and when she she looked like uh, Han Solo's wife from the comic books. Oh, she that's does. another thing yeah. too. Yeah, which that's canon because that's part of the new the new comic series. Right, yeah. is the wife. So I don't. I guess this maybe this is me getting all like social justice warrior a little bit here. But I was really hoping that this might have been like pushed us a little bit further in terms of more diversity amongst the cast and characters and it, yeah. didn't, it didn't do any of that 
really. Like it, we still had the exact same brown haired white English female lead, and then we got we got a lot more Lando, which is great. But it, just, it didn't it didn't do enough, I think, for me in terms of being different. It didn't do enough for me for like for Beckett either, trying to buy into for him for the rest of the movie. I was like, mm, I would have liked to have seen something more out of him. Yeah. Well, I think like the two of them showing a domesticity showing a life held together as criminals and smugglers would have given Han hope that maybe he can save Kira. Yeah. Would have given Han a vision of what he could aspire to, even though Beckett eventually betrays him. But like seeing the domesticity for longer and getting to live in it longer, I think would have helped shape. Yeah, she would have been such a better presence throughout the film. Ultimately, like, yeah, she's got to, it's, it's the curse of Rogue One that now like, I think this is definitely a case of fridging a character with mm-hmm. Tandy Newton, but at the same point, we're kind of running into the fact of like prequel characters more likely will die. That seems to be the new trend of prequel stories. Is if it's a character you haven't seen in movies subsequent, they're probably going to die. But they don't. But they don't have to. Like they don't in, have to. Like in Rogue but One, these movies are establishing yeah, that pattern. It, Rogue One was so close to the major events of Star Wars that it made sense that everyone would have to die for them to not be around. Whereas this is so separated enough, I mean, again, it comes that idea, like, this world is supposed to be so big that you would believe there'd be characters that they would pass by and never come back around to mm-hmm. again. And, I, yeah, I don't think they had to, like, kill everyone off. I, mean, I guess they did it just to simplify down the crew. Yeah. Um, but, like, they just, I don't know, they didn't really have to. No, that's true. I mean, well, I don't even know how you guys feel about the planet war because it's... Uh, he uh, Solo and Kira get separated, and he's like, oh, I'm coming back for you, and that seems to be his big motivating factor for the beginning part of the movie. And then he just runs right into her on the... the How convenient. I'm just like, Mm -hmm. that's it? All right. It also felt like she was this close to just covering his eyes and saying, guess who? Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I I actually, in my mind, that's what she did. (laughs) I mean, Kira was an interesting character. Like, Uh I wish they gave her, like... The foundation of the character was interesting. Whether or not they gave Amelia Clark the grounds to do it, but it's just like, yeah, like I think she could have been a much more interesting character, especially like if they played up the fact that like I did shit to survive. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm uh, I'm gonna allude to it, and like she never like Han. I don't think ever notices her tattoo. No, I think once. she would like she was basically like a a Black Widow. Yeah, she's a femme fatale. Yeah, and that would have been like. I don't know. I wish. I, I don't know. So but then move into noir trip. Like it's just like they they mm-hmm. just are so shallow with so every, every choice that they made. What, what if what if they did this? What if we basically take out the whole first section on Corellia, right? So we take out. How will I know he's from Corellia? Yeah. Well, my God, I know. How will we know we got his name? But no, like so. Imagine if when we that's meet... that's the last line of the movie. They, yeah. just, they move it from there because that yeah. has to stay. Yeah, yeah it has to be, it has to be there somewhere. Uh, oh, we can add this to the great yeah. list of. Movie titles spoken in dialogue. It's yeah. true. But imagine if when we meet Kira, we all we know about her is that she is the lieutenant to Paul Bettany's character. I don't remember his name. So that instead of them Vision. having a backstory and Han trying to like win over his ex-girlfriend, it's just Han being Han and hitting on the boss's girlfriend and being good at it because yeah. he's charming and everyone likes him. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like that would have been way more interesting because then that adds an elephant that adds a totally different element of conflict. But it's like him being. <gasps> oh, what if we made this a new Troy? <laughs> I never. Brad Pitt. Ne- How dare you? I mean, no, you're. I think. <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> knowing you, Chris, you should have seen it by now. <laughs> but <laughs> as as a movie fan, you're excused. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm really missing out. You get, you no, you're missing the, out on on. You're missing on the Brad Pitt on Brad, buns. On the Brad, yeah, Brad Pitt buns. It, it, oh, there's it, Brad Pitt buns. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, excuse oh. me, excuse oh, this yeah. gentleman. <laughs> I like, have places to be. <laughs> only Benjamin Button does a better job of showing peak Brad Pitt. Oh. Like this might be the Troy might be peak Brad Pitt. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna go do that. Like, right like now. even a level higher than Snatch Brad Pitt. Mm. I mean, he's got the scraggly beard. I would say like Mr. and Mrs. Smith Brad Pitt is like peak. Okay, yeah. Like when he's got the shirt. Like even like Ocean's Eleven Brad Pitt. Yeah. Like that era is like peak. Mm. And he does this really cool jump move where he stabs the oh, guy. Yeah. That's oh, cool. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like if you what if you took all the really cool parts of ancient Greece and then made it really boring. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, good. That's yeah. that's what I'm looking for. It also for three hours film. long. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, but, but, but I okay. mean the story of Troy I think is a cool story, which would have been like 
the boss's girl leaves with Han, and now it's like an underground war yeah. of this giant city trying to get the girl back. But it's, not I'm not. What their problem was is that scene where Kira's talking to Nest, and he's like, "He's the good guy." Yeah, that was. That's their foundation of this movie. It's so dumb. Mm-hmm. Like this, he should be the rogue. He should be the one who's like, "Oh, I just I always look after myself." No matter what. Yeah. You know, and it just... No, but uh. instead, now you know that Han's always been a good man and put on this rogue persona to survive in this world he chose to be in. He didn't He didn't take a life, really, until he took Beckett's, and that's supposed to be his crossing over into this rogue life. But it was a hard-fought thing, and he just struggled with it to a degree, but it was just sort of like... That was like his thing, and and it was just like no, he's actually this good man. His 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 eventual future with the rebellion, what he does is who he actually is, and this rogue life is something he's put on to survive, and that's not really Han Solo. No, Han Solo's a rogue who recognizes his good heart within him, but he's deep down he's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, well, and that also that general arc just doesn't work well in a movie because you have to basically have your character start out a nice guy and be a dick at the end yep. but also there's not an element of tragedy to it so it's it's not a character breaking bad or anything like that it's just someone becoming an asshole and that's not really much of a movie it should it literally should have been like Ocean's like you're right with Ocean's Eleven because now it's just like Danny Ocean's just like he's a like it opens up with him released from prison mm-hmm. and so it's like and but we love Danny Ocean the whole time we love George Clooney the whole time and granted that is George Clooney's genuine charisma that yeah. leads that film but something like that like they showed you can, Soderbergh showed that you can make a film with bad guys and you care about them more than you do yeah. the person quote unquote in the right well because you can just when you meet a character who's already fully formed, that's how that sort of stuff works. And the problem is this movie could have just given us Han more or less as he is later on. Maybe it's a little bit more naive. I, that would have been at least something interesting that he like makes mistakes and like learns from his arrogance. That's a bit of that here. We didn't need the whole good guy arc thing. We didn't need all the backstory. Like we should just he should just been as he is. I'm gonna recut the Ocean's Eight trailer with the solo characters. Do you know why it's Ocean's Eight? I fi- I finally figured it out. Because you can get a trilogy out of it before you hit Ocean's Eleven. Amazing. <gasps> oh, thank oh. God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Double trilogies. Mind. Uh, speaking blown. of that, I'm very curious, and I'm sure this will be something we'll sort of track uh, movie by movie, but very curious to see when we're going to have a podcast crossover this year that doesn't feature somebody who was in The Avengers. Black oh. Panther, The Avengers, Josh Brolin in uh, Deadpool, Deadpool, and Paul Bettany in this. Teen Titans go to the movie? Who um, knows? Yeah, Who knows who's going to be in well, that? Hang on, let's think about it. So the next one's going to be Ant Man. Oh, oh, Incredibles, Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Samuel Jackson. Yeah, Sam yeah. Jackson. Um, Sam Jackson. Uh, and then Ant Man Wasp. Obviously, 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 that, obviously that, that counts. Um, Venom. The, Venom uh, maybe Tom Holland, maybe. Riz. Let's see, Riz Ahmed. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. Might, Tom Holland might be a cameo. Aquaman. Oh. Aquaman will probably be our best bet. Um, let's see, Amber Heard. Uh, yeah, Aquaman might be Willem it. Willem Dafoe, I think, is in there, right? Patrick War. No, not Patrick Warburton. Oh, oh that would be great. my emotions no, Patrick like Wilson, <laughs> uh, Nicole Kidman. Yeah, we'll maybe. see, but we might have to wait till the end of the year before. Yeah. Because it's especially funny like when all the ads are like, Summer of Solo. Bitch, it's the summer of Avengers. The summer of the Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's pretty much everything but the summer of Solo. Yeah. As yeah. Well, I mean, it's by the box. Office. I mean, it's really yeah. the summer of Brolin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, great. Frank Frank brought up a great question before we started recording of what are the Disney parks doing about Solo? The answer is nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing is going Diddly on shit. at the Disney parks right now. Like at Land or World or Tokyo or Shanghai or Hong Kong or Paris. Wow. <laughs> we get it. Cares about <laughs> you like solo. Disney. I like Disney. Well, I, I almost wish the movie would have ended where he goes and finds Lando again, and he says, how about a rematch? And then we just cut the credits right there. So Because it really, we, we know, know what it. happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. What do you guys, because, you know, I want Even maybe taking the cards, too. Yeah. Like that, like pocketing the cards, like showing, like basically setting the table of yep. what, how we know it's going to play out, and then the fact that he's snagged this and like, all right, Lando, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, because we we you got get it, Frank, I get it, I get it, I get <laughs> it. So you're like one beat off from, uh, oh god, what's the anime? 
Did You're I looking at me? You're looking at me to answer that question? <laughs> Cowboy Bebop. What? Like, oh, yeah. Cowboy Bebop Dude, theme. if this would have Tank been fuck. just straight up Cowboy Bebop. That's exactly Bebop, what it should have been. Holy that's shit. That's what this should have been. This should have just been a live action fucking Cowboy Bebop movie. <laughs> Cowboy Bebop is a 1998 anime about. It's oh, dude, yeah, seriously. It, it's, Chris, it's just a bunch again. of like. That's another one. Yeah, it, it's just a bunch of like. Are there buns assholes. in it? I mean, Spike Spiegel is a, a, a good looking character. Yeah, no, he's he's probably one of the sexiest anime characters out mm-hmm. there. Okay. Right. Super smooth. Mm-hmm. He's he's definitely just he's but, just Han Solo. Yeah, yeah, but really, like the real the real bait is uh, Faye Valentine. Yeah, I mean that's that's what everyone goes or the, in for. Or the space Spike. corgi. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the There's space, space corgi on the on the on the. They ship. have a they have a corgi okay. on the ship. <laughs> All right. Who's wonderful. Okay, yeah. so that sounds very. But yeah, it's just yeah. a bunch of outlaws that they're they're bounty hunters, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're just a bunch of assholes that live on a ship together, and just and it's the coolest ship too. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's seriously goddamn. It should be Cowboy Bebop. Bebop. It's called Firefly. Yes. Ooh. Okay. It's called Firefly. <laughs> You know, so, I didn't realize Nicolas Cage does the voice of Superman in this yes! movie. Yes, yeah, so excited. Deal. That's really good. Wait, okay. Wait, what? He does the uh, voice of Superman in the Teen Titans. Teen Titans go to the movie. He's finally gets to be Superman. When I saw that, do you think he's gonna have scraggly? Like he's gonna look like Nick Cage? They're gonna go into his closet and see the silver suit, and someone's gonna comment on it. It's like, what is this? Like, we don't talk about that. He'll probably have like a long-haired wig, like on one of those like little like styrofoam mannequin heads. Oh. Uh, it, that's or Beast gonna Boy's be, gonna like dress that movie's up gonna be so action. fun. <laughs> like that's <laughs> really what I'm looking forward to. It, this it, summer. It, it, it's a kid's Deadpool, is what yeah. I imagine it to yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm sure in that universe that their version of Superman does a whole bunch of Japanese pachinko ads. <laughs> <laughs> be better. <laughs> Should be great. Okay, so so one we get so many. Apparently, the Hansel we meet in the original movies, everything that we know about him happens in the course of this story. Right. He gets his name. He gets his blaster. He meets Everything Chewie. The he meets Lando. He yeah. He gets the Falcon, like all these things. Makes the castle run. Makes the castle mm-hmm. run. Like, what do you think if they had narrowed it down? Goes to, like, off to one, work with Java. Right. Yeah. Like if they had narrowed it down to like one thing, like this is the story about him and Chewie getting together, or this is the story about him and like inheriting the Falcon. Do you think that would have worked better if they hadn't done all of it and made it just a much more condensed, simplified version? Like this is if you want to have, if you had a list of things you didn't know about Han Solo, this answer is one of them. Or maybe two. Do you think it would have worked better? I mean, to see more of the Han and Chewie relationship grow, I would have been all in for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's really what I want to see. Yeah, I don't know if I need to see them in the Millennium Falcon. I mean, certainly just like, you know, like, oh, that's cool, but I don't know if I need to see them in it. Yeah. That's probably less important than seeing those, that, that actual relationship grow. Because I feel like it's fine here, but I never, I, I don't, it doesn't, like, I, I don't, it doesn't satisfy that the fan in me that right. has grown up watching those characters together, like, Oh yeah! All right, this is well, yeah. great. I can see this friendship forming. Well, you can tell they made it. They made a meal out of that whole moment. They really wanted to like play it up. And I think it would have worked better if it hadn't been undercut by so many tedious reveals. Like if that one of the big moments, like was the two of them for the first time in the cockpit together, would have been great. But it just yeah. they had some other stupid things them, beforehand. Them showing up in the cockpit of Force Awakens was a bigger moment than oh than yeah just showing up yeah. the well, cockpit like the, for the first moment. time. Yeah, but it's just like that shouldn't be that way. It yeah. should have been. It should have. The monumental thing should have been Han in there for the first time. Yeah, it's uh, like mm-hmm. it's. I just think of Bill Watterson. He really regretted showing when he first started Calvin and Hobbes, showing how Calvin and Hobbes met. Oh, I didn't know he did that. And it was yeah, it's this bullshit where Calvin is talking to his dad about whether or not tigers eat tuna because he oh, set a tiger I trap. Read this one. And then it. The last panel is Hobbes eating a sandwich, like caught on like a line. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's they, They're not even together in the first thing. But it's just like, this is a relationship that it's just like, you should have just jumped in yeah. knowing that th- that's just what it is. This is just the, the way it always is. Yeah. Han and Chewie, Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's this, like, I was more excited that they name dropped Bosk. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Of stuff. It was <laughs> and Aura like, Singh, too, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, it's like, I would have rather, like, really, it's just like, I think they're forgetting the fact that people want to see these worlds and exist in this universe rather than any sort of individual character. Oh, yeah. let's also not forget the blatant Mandalorian armor centered perfectly in the background of every shot in the last scene. In, in, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. During the whole fight in, yeah, when it looks... Yeah, when yeah, they're yeah. in Vision's room. Also, did anyone... I And also, <laughs> the, the land... Like, Lando's had that stuff that he snuck into Jabba's palace... For twenty years? Oh yeah, that was kind of dumb. Come yeah. the fuck on. 
Uh, that I, was stupid. I pointed that to Cameron after the fact. And Woody wore it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but did either one of you guys spot the uh, idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark sitting in Paul Bettany's oh, no. like, collection of artwork and stuff? It was like it was centered on in the frame amongst a, a, a table of all bunch of other, other random things. I care about that when George Lucas does it. Not right, when Disney yeah, not and Ron when Howard do it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Well, I don't really care about that Ron Howard does. So Well, Ron, but also it's like it's more Disney's fault than it's like cause Ron Howard's like part of the family. Like he He's like done stuff with Lucasfilm. He's he's was in American Graffiti. Like he's like no, that. Was, like, like I I know Ron Howard's body of work does not make me excited to see this movie. But Ron Howard also comes from a lineage like comes from the people who made yeah. Star Wars. They're just like all right. Like of all the people to put in the seat, I feel fine with him. Well, yeah, they clearly did it because like oh we've worked with Ron before. He's not gonna fuck this up. Yeah. Which I guess technically he didn't really. Oh yeah, that is that. That's the cameo that I wanted. They make the joke in Fanboys, the the kind of parody movie. Yeah. Uh, when they go into the the Star Wars vault, that Jay Bruchel's character, like he's so excited about Willow's spell book, <laughs> and I didn't realize that was directed by Ron Howard. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And written by George Lucas. Yeah. So, like that's the cameo I wanted. I mean, they had Warwick Davis. And they, Warwick yeah, Davis. And they, yeah, yeah, and they even had Willow front and center. Even gave him a line of dialogue, so we got that extra pay bump. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, I don't. Uh. But I love Warwick Davis too. Like he's like, I don't know. It's it's those little things that made me excited, but then at the same time, it's it's getting lost in the trees a lot of times. So, <clears throat> I guess, how do you guys feel about Star Wars moving forward now with back to back Last Jedi solo? I think we were all pretty disappointed with the Last Jedi. Now we have this. How do you feel about where this is going? Well, and now that we announced that James Mangold's going to be doing a Boba Fett film. Yeah, what do we think about that? Like, as long as Maul's in it. <laughs> well, he might be. Like, this is what... But as long as, like, it, he might be, which is like, ugh. <laughs> well, and, so, like, I don't want it to, kn- like, corporate synergy crap right. in this. I, I mean, like, look, if they had... I think my problem with the Maul thing was that it was so throwaway. That there's no... Like, he's not an actual character in this. He's just... Uh, like, he's not even Easter egg. He's just this weird little bit of fan service. Like, if he showed up in the Boba Fett movie, actually in person with the robot legs, and we got just a little bit of his backstory, even just a little bit, just enough to get get a sense of how he came to be there, that could have been interesting for him to actually be a character. What what if you knew that uh, the Han Solo, it was going to be a trilogy? Would that, would his appearance... I would not have been, bother you as much because you figured you'd know more about it. Well, then it. they would have just confirmed that it's sequel bait. Now I can at least be like, well, maybe they're just being idiots. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's would you would it? What? How would you have felt if uh, it was just a silhouette? If we never actually saw who? Just as dumb. Okay. Yeah. Then like, who the fuck is this guy like, that has it? been like revealed as like a threat? Then then you start falling into the J.J. Abrams mystery box territory, which again I still blame a lot of the problems last Jedi it's on J.J. Abrams. <laughs> Darth Maul is <laughs> Ray's parents. Kira and Darth Maul are Ray's parents. Yep. They said all... we're going to be working really closely together. <laughs> and true. that is me too code for I'm going to yeah. harass you. Does that mean, <laughs> does Darth Maul have a robo penis? He's going to use the force, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Midi chlorines and all that. That's yeah. right. That's right. True. Force works in mysterious <sighs> ways. Mysterious ways. <laughs> but it's also like, even if it was a trilogy, even if you like, you go into. I went into Force Awakens knowing that's a trilogy, but they that's the unspoken rule of a good Star Wars movie is that the first movie in the trilogy is standalone, and then the second one's the cliffhanger, and the third one's the resolution. Like that's yeah. the the first two trilogies are that. I mean, Star Wars was that because George Lucas was like, I don't even know if I'm gonna get another chance at this. He wrote like. A backup sequel for to oh, be like yeah. super low budget and I think that didn't even have Han Solo in it. Wait, I think isn't that the planet? That might be the planet that Han's on when he's serving in as an infantry. Like I heard something about that. I forget what the there was the story that George Lucas wrote as his low budget backup to Star Wars was well, set on some planet. I think that's the planet they're on. Maybe it's Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, but I forget what the name of the planet is. But I thought I heard that. that that's where. That story. I think is set. It, the, it was like some Dagobah ripoff. Yeah. Which, Sim, similar kinda, to that. Yeah, kind of what this looks like in a lot of ways. Yeah. But it's, I mean, do you, are you guys more cynical now about Star Wars moving forward? I don't know, because I feel like to go back with like the Boba Fett film, I always feel like that's a character that, and I think everybody feels like so cool because he's been so underserved in the, the film. But then it's also that danger, like, if you know too much, does that reveal the, uh, that takes away the coolness of him? Yeah. So I feel like given now, my 
like you talk to me like ten years ago, I might be more excited for a Boba Fett film. Yeah. Now, oh, given Jesus. what they've done for the past couple of films, my optimism for a really awesome Boba Fett film is pretty low. Well, and it's mm-hmm. the in six years we'll have gotten the same amount of Star Wars movies as we did originally with George Lucas than we do now. Yeah. We'll have an equal amount of Disney Star Wars and George Lucas Star Wars, and that's kind of upsetting. I, it is. Like, I just... Star Wars was special because we had to wait for it. Yeah. And now Disney is milking it for all it's worth and not providing strong enough content. Like, Marvel is milking us, fucking, like, bending us over. Yeah. Like, three movies a year yeah. from Marvel. But, mm-hmm. like, I'll give Marvel credit for having diversity. And if we... So, if they're... Av- they still do the event picture, though, too, right? Like... Yeah. Like... Infinity War was great, and we really had, like, the last time we had that sort of, like, big ensemble would have been really Civil War at the end of the day. You know, that was three years prior. Mm -hmm. So we're still getting, I mean, obviously Avengers 4 will be the exception because, you know, they have to pick up the cliffhanger. But at least they still kind of do space out. Like, it's always building towards something. Yeah. You know, like, I still maintain at this point the only franchise that has time in between movies is James Bond. Yeah. But it's also, like, you didn't, like... You can go into Ant Man having watched nothing. Oh, I like Mission Impossible. Yeah. Oh, Mission Impossible. I'm looking, so I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. So, yeah, it gives a long <laughs> time. Okay, but, uh, yeah, I just I don't. I'm not super optimistic about it. I mean, I still really want Shrek. them. Shut up, Cam. We're, we're past this. <laughs> it is Ryan Johnson doing a trilogy that is <laughs> so mean to you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> That is completely supposed to be like all, all, all new territory. Does that excite you, or you're like, nah, I don't care? I, uh, it's I almost worry if it's a little bit. Is it too late? Like they've kind of fouled this up so bad at this point. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's enough at the end of the day. And I think that I, I hate to say this because I think Kathleen Kennedy has been one of the most influential and effective producers we've ever had in cinema. I just don't think she's in the right role. I don't think she's a Kevin Feige. Yeah. Like, well, really what we're coming down to is really realizing for better or for worse that this is something that George Lucas built and yeah. this is really only George Lucas's thing. Yeah. He I mean, yeah, he screwed the pooch with the prequels, but like the prequels still felt like like I don't know, like this the Rogue One, all these movies have been objectively better than any of the prequels. Solo exception. I'd s- For me, this is the worst Star Wars movie. I mean, I'm not feeling that. I mean, yeah, it's weird though. There's just something static about it. Like, what what are you more likely to sit down and watch? Like this or Episode Revenge two. of the Sith? I I if this were on like the TNT movie marathon, I'd watch Revenge of the Sith more than I would watch Solo. Yeah, or any of these. Same. I mean, like uh, Force Awakens. Is it, it, but that's also because it's such like the sin of that one is J.J. Abrams tries nothing original, right? J.J. Abrams just carbon copies um, New Hope, yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why that movie is so good, is because he just he really understood the magic of what made that that movie special, not n- necessarily as a Star Wars movie, but as a movie in and of itself. It's a really good Star Wars cover band, yeah, yeah. that yeah, you're, yeah. you're you're willing to kind of listen to because you can't get the originals dead or whatever you want to call it, yeah. <laughs> like they're, yeah. The Beatles are all dead. It's the 18th to the Abba. Mm-hmm. It's the what? <laughs> and, that's, and that's what Ron Howard coming <laughs> on. Don't worry about it. I'm dead. Ron Howard coming yeah, on feels like Ringo <laughs> is playing drums in the Beatles cover band, kind of. <laughs> like, it's just, all right, like, he's part of this. He's, he's, he's cut from the same cloth. Like, it should be better than what it is. But yeah, none of these, like, it's just. That really does fit, the Ron <laughs> Howard is the Ringo star of film directors. <laughs> Because I don't know, at least for me, I've been kind of chasing that high that I felt in one moment during uh, Phantom Menace. And that mm-hmm. was just for the one just static shot of uh, Kenobi and Darth Maul doing their lightsaber battle. Yeah. Where just like that, we're seeing something like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. We're seeing Jedi's kind of like at their lit- doing something cool. Lit- my thing is the when he does the dr- dr- yes. like the, the front yes. back yeah. front yeah. block back block is it that's yes. the cool it like well, that little bit yeah like that's the thing is that obviously there's a lot of problems with those movies and I think part of the reason I still like them is because I was a kid when they came out but you can go back and like well there's definitely some major character problems and a lot of the acting is really bad but 
the like the fight choreography of them is great. Mm-hmm. The scores I think are maybe better than even the original yeah. trilogy. Well, like, that was that was the old joke was the worse the movie, the better the score. That's true, actually. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because Attack of the Clones has the bet like their love song. Oh, Cross oh, the stars. Yeah. Like again, like <laughs> yeah. This had nothing. That's like so good. Attack of the Clones is pretty much a terrible film in a lot of ways. But that the way that movie closes with like the the rise of the Imperial March theme as the clones are going onto the ship and then going into Across the Stars at the end and that wedding, that is a great section of film. And it's only it kind of is better if you've seen everything that precedes it. Like you do kind of have to go through the rest of the movie to get to yeah. it. It's, it's worth it in the end. I don't I don't feel like you there's no reason to like or even the Obi Wan Anakin fight at the end of Revenge of the Sith is still really good. Again, it's kind of better if you've gone all the way through it. There's, there's yeah. Nothing... If George Lucas had hired a better fight co- choreographer, like that's it's like stuff like that. Yeah. It's just like the George twirling. Lucas is making the, he's making yeah. the right choices. It's just he should have brought in other people. Yeah, like well, it's just yeah. like the choices he made for his characters were interesting within the, within that stuff. It's just like he should have brought in like a script guy to just well, finesse the hell out of those stories. That's been said a lot about the problem with the prequels is he made those in isolation. They were self financed, yeah. so they're actually independent films. At the end of the day, like, all, like all Fox distributed them, but they didn't the, pay for it. The all the George Lucas Star Wars are independent films. Yeah, and I think he. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. one well, you know again his best movie was the one where he had um, like Irvin Kershner coming in and be like no. We're we're going to do this way instead. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with like Lawrence Kasdan. And then with Return of the Jedi, he didn't like that from the previous movie. So he exerted more control over it. And that's why Jedi definitely has some weak points. I'm looking at you, Ewoks. Oh, come on. How dare you? Oh, no, I, st- I stand behind that. Should they the could support. The yeah. <laughs> they supported two full movies, one more than Solo. And an animated series. <laughs> that's yeah. true, an animated series. But like, and then we get to the prequels. It's him working in pure isolation. I think that's. The problem we've had with the the new films is that we're desperately missing his influence. We it needs him and other creatives to help wrangle him in. This it's the it's the opposite side of the same problem. Yeah, it's George Lucas made the prequels completely by himself, and these are remain completely without George Lucas. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah, it's yeah. I mean, I think the the best they've done so far has been Rogue One, which you. you you are not a big fan of Rogue One, though. I, 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 I to wasn't. I wasn't, and I I still feel I I honestly feel bad for not liking that movie. As you should. Yeah. Who would you rather watch, this or Solo or Rogue One again? I'd I'd rather watch Rogue One again. I, I think honestly, go back. How many times have you seen Rogue One? I think just once. Okay. I, I do want to go back and go, watch it. I I, I liked saw it. it. I saw it twice in theaters. Yeah. Every I've time I've watched it. more times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then really just yeah. as your mind goes numb. <laughs> yeah. Every time really I watch it, I in. appreciate it a little bit more. Rogue One. I think that's what's worth going back to. Okay. But, like, I mean, so if they gave us an Obi-Wan movie, like, do you, would that be exciting for you guys? Only because I liked Ewan McGregor in there. He's I great. would. He's so great. Yeah. I, I would be down to see that. Mm-hmm. But I also, I don't, but the story seems weird to me because he's on Tatooine. So I, I feel like the movie is then getting him off Tatooine for some reason. I think they can still have it set entirely on Tatooine. They could do, like, a, like a searcher's, like, racer. John Ford style. It could be a pod racer. <laughs> yeah, that it's speed racer, but with Obi-Wan. That's what I'd like to see is what sort of life was Obi Wan able to carve out for himself on Tatooine while watching Luke. Yeah. And maybe something like he gets pulled into some side quest outside of Luke and outside of protecting uh Luke from the Empire and from yeah. Vader and everything like that. Yeah, like the searchers would actually probably be a really cool idea or even like stage like a wet like something like a western motif with it would probably be good yeah because that some fits, sort of goal oriented film yeah that fits obi-wan where he he was always trying to do the right thing and he fucked up and the whole galaxy paid a price but if he was put in a situation you believe that he would still try and be involved and maybe something goes wrong again there that further drives him into isolation but i think you can put an arc in that story and still have it fit between those two films, all right. Well, and also, I mean, technically, if we want to, if everyone wants to just get obsessed with the dialogue and what they need to fill plot holes with, mm-hmm. Vader says, "I feel a presence, a presence I haven't felt since." And finishes. we assume it's uh, Mustafar, yeah, um, but we don't know. Mm-hmm. It could have been some more recent event, yeah, a presence I haven't felt since fifteen years ago. Yeah, but I also feel like it's also going to be something like we talked about the prequels, where he'll meet a bunch of characters that'll all end up dying, so that nobody else really knows about Ben Kenobi, except this is like an eccentric person that just hangs out in the desert. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, 
All right, cool. So we just got to watch one. Well, then maybe he needs to be a side. Maybe that's what they need to be doing is make these characters side characters in this. Build up, do a Lando movie because Lando really, Lando just needs to get a end Tuscan up Raider on, movie. Yep, I'm down. Yeah, but like, yeah, something like that. And like, have like no Obi-Wan, uh, Obi-Wan be like a side character, something you have to go to for information. Like how like Bail Organa just shows up in Rogue One for a little bit. Like, that's really cool. Like, cool, we'll get it connected. But then, like, not have him be a, a pull focus character. Have him mm. give him the, the Wolverine cameo from First Class. <laughs> Fuck <Damn>. off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you want to see a Lando film end with him uh, saying, oh, uh, Cloud City. Mm-hmm. God, if yes. every <laughs> single one of these goddamn prequels does that, yeah. I'm going to announce where I'm going to be the next time you see me right. in these films. <laughs> How, random question, because we were talking about a Boba Fett movie happening now. How old is Boba Fett? Because he's at least 10 in episode two. Yep. And then episode three is what, like, Four or five years later, mm-hmm. so he's fifteen. So, well, because so he's at least he's a forty-five year old man when he dies. Yeah, that, that's about. about. That's a, right. Yeah, because okay, well, I think is um what when he dies, quote unquote. I think yeah. is it when he's eaten. Um, is Extended episode universe. one set thirty year? Episode one's pretty much thirty years prior to A New Hope, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So or Obi Wan has aged terribly. <laughs> oh, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thirty years from young Ewan McGregor to yeah, Alec so Guinness. The, no, he's more like he would be like thirty three, thirty four when he dies because he's basically born. Dies. Yeah, Airbus I mean, because he's yeah he um well he's born essentially at the time of the Phantom so, Menace. So yeah. So yeah. So he yeah. Okay. So yeah. he's cloned. Well, uh, well, no. He said he was cloned and not aged. Right. In yeah, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, but the, like that so army was ten years Fett. old already. So yeah, he's ten. But so he because the clone army is created just after the events of Phantom Menace. That's thirty years prior. All right, to well, no we hope. need to go back and see when Cypher Dias was Yo, making these plans. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that name up. <sighs> so many good names in Star Wars with such terrible follow ups on what those people actually are. Mm-hmm. Like also, the Clone Wars, Cypher Dias. Yeah. Some terrible names too. Like the the classic character Orn Frita, named after a corn fritter. <laughs> well, it's like True they story. have those uh, two uh, the alien race that's named after uh, Beastie Boy songs. That's what, true. Oh, what are the oh what are the alien? Uh, races? Joseph Gordon Lovett's cameo alien is like slow and row or something like that. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and then the other fighter. It's the guy. He's a fighter pilot who dies in Force Awakens. There's also fight for your right to party. It's oh right, of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the famous character. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, fight for your right to party. Yeah. The, the Sabatosians. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> I could get behind that one. Paul Bettany's character, because that, that's kind of what Michael T. Williamson was going to play him, and yes. then they couldn't come back for research, so they brought in Paul Bettany. It was fine. Just fine? Would you fine want to him. see him? I mean, I probably would have been more interested with Michael T., I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, but he's fine. Like, it was a cool look. But it's just sort of like, all right, like, but that's what I want. I want just a cool-looking gangster who I think could maybe kill our characters, and that's it. I think Paul Bettany did that. Yeah. He was serviceable. Yeah. Yeah, boy, 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 we're talking about this film. It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm just such a man about this I think movie. That's yeah. honestly like why I'm just like, I'm done with this podcast. Because it's just like, <laughs> there's only so much I could be meh about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole thing is just kind of like, well, that was a thing that had some potential that became nothing. Well, I think it says a lot of like how low our expectations were for this film. And even that wasn't hit. I just wanted it to be fun. And it was for the middle 40 minutes. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't we didn't even really talk about the train heist. It's fine. Or the, or the or the castle run. Okay, okay. Actually, good question there. Do you guys like that they found a way to justify why they said parsecs rather than like light years or something? Like that? I or, like, don't give a shit. Fans I do. Didn't real need... fans do? Fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like I didn't need that. Trevor's at a big all. fan. I was also like, who cares? It's Star Wars. It's set in a place with lizard people. A parsec could be a time. In that world. There's whiskey in but this world. What, like, yeah. <laughs> so what did you guys always think the Kessel Run was? Did you, this, like, I thought it was short? like wacky, I thought it was wacky racers, honestly. Okay. Oh, and that's was, what I would have wanted to see. Yeah, yeah, like, just like, it's a crazy heist race. Yeah. It's a smuggler's race. Like, it's an underground thing. Like, yeah. make this, like, if you want to steal from a franchise, oh, make shit. this Don't fast this. and Don't. furious. Oh. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! I'm sorry, but isn't that one of the uh, biggest franchises in movie history right now? It is, Chris. Like, sadly so. He lives his life a quarter parsec at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it's about? 
family. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> More reason yes. for Vin Diesel to be in this franchise. Uh, but no, but on it, like that's that's what I imagined the Kessel Run was was some sort of wacky racers sort of thing where it's just all these like um, villainous people just trying to like doing this street race thing. Yeah, because I, mean, I thought it was not an entirely unclever way of like justifying that, but it did seem like this wouldn't be the stuff of legend. Like, who's really going to give a shit that someone, like, cut through the cloud, like, the space cloud and yeah. got out of there? Like, that, I don't see that being a thing that people talk, like, tell stories about. Oh, that Kessel Run that you did is bullshit, which is why the character just immediately turned away. But the Kessel Run that was established in New Hope, yeah. like, that was a cool one that I cared about. But we didn't see The that. one that I always heard was, for it being distance, um, was the Kessel Run was basically how close you could get to Imperial territory without actually, like, crossing the border. Um, oh, okay. It's so, like, he, like... Because most people would take, like, the long route to avoid getting caught mm -hmm. doing whatever smuggling they were doing. And so Han, like, like risked his life by basically cutting right at the edge of Imperial territory where he was about well, to yeah. get caught. Like, kind of what they did with... Like, yeah, I, I can kind of see it as being, like, something like that. that that's like, the Kessel totally Run is, is a legendary course mm -hmm. yeah. it's some sort of legendary thing and he was the one who did it fast. yeah it's like only the daredevils can do something like that yeah mm -hmm. which like, like like a speed racer one of those big races there at the oh, end of the film yeah it's mm -hmm. such a good movie it is it actually is oh. a really good movie can we just talk yeah. about speed racer emile hirsch hour? would have been a better han solo i'd agree with that <laughs> I, I still maintain Current day emile hirsch mm, yeah maybe not so much <laughs> I still think it should have been Taron Edgerton. Like he actually has yeah, the charisma to lead the the film, even if he doesn't necessarily have the look. But like, to be honest, now there's Alden Ehrenreich. Yeah. So. Yeah, Taron Edgerton. If you put if you put yeah. that uh, feathered top on him, yeah. I'd see it. Or Ansel Elgort. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Of the th of the three white guys with weird names, <laughs> they picked the wrong one. I do. I have to admit, it makes me sad though. Anytime I see <clears throat> any of the uh, the merchandise around the film, and I see like the busts, like uh, Gentle Giant are putting out, and it's just of. Uh, Good old new solo, whatever his name is. Yeah, Alden but, Aaron. Right? Yes, I'm like, oh, that's not that's not solo. Yeah, that's the that's, first thing I look at is like, yeah. that's not that's it's, not solo. Yeah. But it's like, but Chewie and Lando, like those two guys, look great. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to look at a Donald Glover and buy him as Lando uh, as opposed to Billy Dee Williams. It's yeah, like, I'm mm -hmm. still willing to buy it. Yeah, but for yeah. him, I'm Just, not. It, it fits. The, I think the the charm is there. Like he feels like that character mm -hmm. still. Plus, we got to see his fantastic cape wardrobe. Yes, in this, yes. Which is one thing I loved. I will say that last motherfucking shirt that he wore, that like clearly was a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the <laughs> that was shirt. too much. It's like there's no way that pattern exists in this universe. I think it was just part of Ron Howard's wardrobe. Yeah, yeah. no, he took it off. He's like, wear this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> reshoots. <laughs> We're out of budget. We're out of money. Take. But this. yeah, that that was the only time. I'm just like that. Come on, that's like being hearing whiskey, hearing bourbon mm -hmm. in Star Wars. Said like bourbon, so ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what I loved, oh, what I loved about uh, Young Lando was, which I brought up to you, was the the two voices. Mm, yeah. Where half the movie he was definitely impersonating Billy Dee Williams, but the second he was in turmoil, like he lost the cool guy attitude, and he's like, I don't like this is not my like everything because he makes a big point of like everything you've heard about me is obviously true. But the second he's put in any kind of danger, he's like, oh, shit, I, 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 this is not my place. This is not where I'm supposed to be right now. Uh, and it, it was kind of cool to, like, like, he's a fucking coward. No. <laughs> he kind of is. But, I mean, he can also, you know, he can fire a gun. He's the... He's kind of badass when they're trying yeah. to escape, uh, escape Castle. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, he's the... Uh, who's the, the second year Harry Potter teacher... Gilderoy Lockhart. Yes. Oh, there he's the, the Lockhart. Kind of brand, yeah. The good old Ken. Mm -hmm. Kenny yeah. Brand. I've been, I'm not up to date on my Millennium Falcon history, mm -hmm. so I did not realize the Millennium Falcon looks so different under Lando as to what it looks like to what we know from the original. Well, it had trilogy. that whole escape pod thing, which yeah, that he added that on. Yeah, Lando supposedly. In there. Yeah, which is what the thing in the center. Yeah, that ejects, so we get our, our familiar prong with yeah. the. I you know I actually liked the look of the the clean Falcon. I liked that they did something a lot different there. I didn't necessarily love that they then like shredded the shit out of it, so it looks like the one we originally got. I you could have had you could have had it take some damage and come to the end of it and not necessarily look just like that ship and just be like twenty more years or ten more years pass, stuff happens to it. Yeah, I think you just like it because now we're getting a new Lego set. I mean, I kind of want to buy that Lego set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I haven't bought a Millennium Falcon Lego pretty much since the I think the original Millennium Falcon Lego, which was a piece of shit and fell apart instantly. 
Um, and I can't afford the super nice eight hundred dollar one, but that like that like a hundred dollar yeah Kelsa Run one. This looks pretty good. It comes with young Lando figure. He's pretty awesome. Ooh. Ooh. Well now oh, we now, uh, now right now I'm like oh, I'm kind of into this. For the second time we've had uh, that uh, satellite dish be torn off mm-hmm. that yeah. ship. So that's a recurring bit yeah. of having to replace it. That's the new Wilhelm scream. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, the, the, it's the just stat, satellite. The satellite, the satellite dish makes the Wilhelm scream next time it gets taken off. Yeah. It's a sentient satellite. It'll happen. I swear it, it's going to happen in whatever nine's going to be called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll lose that satellite. The lost <laughs> satellite. Is that the name of the movie? Star Wars Episode Nine. Please don't give up on us. <laughs> Please. It's just the last one, guys. I also feel bad, like they had that scene where Beckett's teaching uh, Chewbacca how to play chess. It seems like mm-hmm. that that all that time, like Chewbacca never gets better no. at chess. No. <laughs> you feel like he oh. just plays people who are more subservient. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what that was the lesson. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did you appreciate that we finally get uh, Wookie tearing people's arms off? Yeah, I did like that. That was a fun nod. Mm-hmm. See, but it's it, also fun. Yeah, sorry. Like, those are uh, good callbacks. There are fun nods in here. There's just too many of them. Yeah. There are too many not fun ones. Mm-hmm. And it was just accidental too. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's sorry. Like, Whoops, I got, I got the arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess if we get, if we ever did get a sequel for this, I assume we'd see more Lando in this. Because I feel like this, if you were to jump from this to Empire, I don't feel like that's enough history between the two of them to really mm-hmm. make that reunion have the importance that it should feel All like right. feel like it does. So, I mean, along those lines, if the follow-up to this is Lando... And Han and Chewie are kind of secondary. Are you more interested in that? Like it's a it's a Lando story where he ends up having to go to Han for help on something, and they are part of it. If it's almost like basically a reversal, I'd be down for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like where he has to call him by his proper name. Yeah, it's like I, oh shit, this is serious. I, okay, that was one thing I did kind of like actually that we because he's the only person in Star Wars to ever call him Han, and I like that that started with him just Leia fucking does with it. him. Mm-hmm. Does she say Han? Leia does it too. But it's only an empire. Oh, okay. It's only an empire that people have that problem. Okay. But I don't, yeah, I, he definitely calls him Han a bunch. I, just, I like it because it sets up here that he's doing that just to fuck with him. Yeah. And that's something that Lando would do, and I like that. But again... Uh, Simple stuff like that. That's see, what I want to answer. Yeah, that's that's the those are the beats I want to see. The, the biggest of. question of Empire. <laughs> Why the fuck does he call him Han? <laughs> I I, where's my Lobot introduction? I want to know where he comes from. Yeah, I really yeah. thought L three was going to be the basis of Lobot. Oh, that would have been interesting. Um, Ooh, like but that, that would have been fucked that's up like too. Part of r- right there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm-hmm. part of the mm-hmm. the thing. Is that? Yeah. But that would have messed up. That you take this female droid and turn into a white man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Mm. Well, if you read the first Lando miniseries from Marvel, uh, they did like, two, three years back. They answer how Lobot became Lobot. So I read it's a pretty good series, oh, really? actually. Yeah, it's not too bad. Charles Sewell, Charles Sewell wrote it. Oh, okay. So also, Lando makes some uh, fun cameo appearances in Star Wars Rebels. Nice. That's yeah. true. That's a, that's a damn good show. I need to it watch is. it. I really, really I, liked it. Is it on yeah, it'll Hulu? reverse your feelings Hulu. about it's, Freddie Prince Jr., Trevor. Yeah. You can't he's, stand that guy. He's great. I have always loved Freddie Prince. I was going to say, ever, like ever, 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 <laughs> ever, ever since he almost, since he was basically the catalyst of the Ultimates forming, I've loved Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Freddie Prince Jr. in the comic books dates Betty Ross, oh, and that's, that's right. one of the like triggers of what sets I off Bruce Banner yeah. to become the yeah. Hulk. Yeah, yeah, she's on a date with Freddie Prince. Yeah, he's like Jr. screaming, that's he's gonna right. kill Freddie Prince Jr. as he's running that's through. Oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot Mark how, Millar. how of the times <laughs> the Ultimates was when it came out. It could have been timelier. I don't yeah. know if Shannon and Elizabeth and Freddie Prince Jr. were at the height of their careers when they were being featured in that comic. A couple years after, yeah, but <laughs> but still, good stuff. <laughs> a little bit after, but no, I mean, I you know, I would say I would more recommend people go watch Rebels than I would say go see Solo. I would second that. Yeah. All right, I'm trying, I'll to find, it. I'm trying to find a way to watch it right now. But it's all up on the um, Disney XD app, which you just need a oh, cool. like a, a an inter, like a mm-hmm. yeah, I have a my, login my, for yeah, yeah, Comcast or Dutch or whatever. Yeah, so no, it all works. It's, it's worth oh, it. Oh boy. There you go. Um, Cameron's got some new stuff to watch. I know, yeah. we, I know what we, I'm watching between now and Incredibles. Should we wrap this shit up at this point, I'm guys? feeling wrapped up. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. This is um, our shortest crossover. I know. Any, I know. any other thoughts? Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm pretty much good, too. But hey, guys, guess what? When we come back around again, it's going to be for The Incredibles, oh, too. God. Yes. Pretty damn excited most anticipated that. film of the year. One of you knows the answer to this. What's the release date? Uh, June so, 13th. June 13th. Yes. Oh wow. So okay. 15th. Yeah. So we have a week off. Fifteenth, because sixteenth is no Saturday. two two weeks off. But if you what? 
as we're sorting that out, I but just think about like how we're feeling about the Marvel films. Still Maybe jazzed, the 15th, excited they're... about the next ones. How does it feel mm-hmm. not to be in this day and age where the ideas of Star Wars films are just kind of met oh, with yeah. like... 15th. Eh, yeah, that, right. it, it really hurts. Yeah. Like, I want to be excited. And it's that, it's that same feeling with, with Rogue One. Where, like, I want to love these. I want these to be my favorite. Like, I have the original trilogy posters hanging above my couch. And I'm, I walk into my apartment proud to yeah. have those hanging up. And he has the prequel posters hanging above his bed. Yes. On the ceiling. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> For the day they'll fall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the solo will be just what stands at the bottom of your toilet that you can yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. step on when you get I just got it's, urinal it's cakes. I was going to say, urinal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's so sad. To be, like, uh, a franchise, I think we all loved growing up to now feel like you're just like, okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't even know if I felt, I mean, granted, like, w- all of us were much younger when the prequels came out. Mm-hmm. Speak uh, for yourself. All right, all right, ageless. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, he's but he's stuck uh, at a young age this entire time. But like, I didn't even with that quote unquote garbage. Everyone's still like, I, I have friends who are just like new rankings of the Star Wars films now that I've seen Solo, and they're ranking Solo high, and people are just like, I'm not even going to mention the prequels. It's like I never felt this fatigued and unexcited to see a Star Wars movie during that stretch. Same. Oh my god, I watched an episode of the OC just to see the trailer for Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah, and that's so it's like the biggest sacrifice. Thing and that's, that's, made. And that's and look at the sacrifice I had to make. Six years, <laughs> six years after you traumatically experienced, <laughs> I know, Phantom Menace, and still you're just like you know, like yeah. that's always been my defense of the prequels. Is it's still Star Wars? It, mm-hmm. it was still, still Star Wars, yep. and I don't know if I can necessarily even say that about these, let alone try and defend the just dearth of them coming out yeah yeah it, it, it was still a huge thing when those movies came out and it was still so exciting mm-hmm. and it just it's not the same anymore mm-hmm. well when when disney first announced and they they were gonna take over lucasfilm they said pretty much we're gonna get stores a priority we're gonna do one like every year like originally it was like yeah finally yeah this is great no and to now feel like no oh, man take a break it's okay yeah yeah, Ugh. just getting there. We just don't need it. Mm-hmm. Kevin Feige. Still, one of my favorite videos is the the news reports of right after Phantom Menace came out and interviewing <laughs> the fans as they're walking out, and everyone it's like a three minute video, and every person's like, "This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm so excited!" <laughs> and the last guy is in full mall makeup. He's like, "That fucking sucked." <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how I felt. Yeah. Oh. Oh, shame. What a what a great down note to end this uh, episode. On. <laughs> yeah. Loved it. Well, I think it fits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> do we uh, do we want to do bat plug since we actually have time for once? Um. Yeah, I guess we can. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. Why the hell not? We've got to reduce numbers. We're almost done here. We'll, we'll end on a positive note. Uh, Frank, what is something you've been uh, reading recently or watching that has been uh, been joyous for you? It's oh, brought uh, you happiness. You know, uh, I would say I've been watching American Ninja Warrior, uh, Ninja vs. <gasps> Ninja. That's always a fun show to watch. Is so it's like Ninja vs. Ninja, is that it's like an all star sort of setup? They or? basically have the they have the the courses are uh, it's an identical course and the Oh uh, the racing. The racing oh, each other through Ninja it. Race? Ninja Race. And it's I, like some of the uh, obstacles they come down so that you have to try to navigate well with the other person how you're gonna get across that. That does sound pretty awesome That's actually. Cool. It's fun. When did you start watching Sasuke? Oh gosh, back when G four was running it. Yeah. What? Yep. And I loved it. That oh. was that's the original name of Ninja Warrior. Oh, okay. Sasuke. And listen to it like the Japanese because oh, they were just with subtitles. I miss it yeah. so much. But the Japanese announcers, man, they would just get so into it that you're just like, even if you couldn't understand it, you're like, yes, yes, yes. yes. You yes. You yes. Felt that I I miss that show so much. Yeah. And there's such like, I mean, they've kind of you know the the, the bigger budget they've kind of elevated you know the courses and stuff, but there's just something about. They're out the the shadow of Mount Modoriyama in this like this crappy field with dirty water yep. and this mud pits all around. That's just like yeah, that's that's and just and you cool. like I mean at least for me because it was on every day every hour. Yep, like I knew who I was cheering for yes. it after a while. Like Yamamoto, I still yeah. remember oh, him. He yes. was he was the all star. He'd been doing it since season one. The fisherman man. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, my I don't remember his name anymore. Yeah, but he was the second person ever to complete Ninja yes. Warrior. It was it was like those were monumental moments. I I know I remember them all. <laughs> That's right. Or like Mr. Ninja, the guy that just kind of get like you watched him kind of oh, deteriorate it was as, as as years went on, and he kept on trying, and he mm-hmm. would always get a little less and a little less than what he did the previous year. Yeah, Mr. Okay. He was the very first guy to complete Ninja Warrior, but then he like had some eye pro he had eye surgery that went bad. 
Uh, and so he like never made it past round one after Aww. that. Yeah. Wah, wah. Mm. And they well, yeah, <laughs> we were trying to end it on a high note, <laughs> and then you brought Sorry. it back. Maybe, maybe Trevor could save us. Trevor, what, what have you been enjoying recently? Um, well, I don't know how good this is going to be for Up in the Room, but Barry has been... Oh, oh is it good? good? I haven't watched it's it done. Yet. It's done now. They only did... That's, that was something I was kind of bo- uh, bummed with with HBO this comedy season is Silicon and Barry were only eight when okay. they traditionally do ten. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Barry was wonderful. Um it was just really well, it was like lived into its premise. It, the actors were phenomenal. The characters were amazing. But it was also something that didn't deviate from either of its premises, which is it's a hitman in an in uh, L.A. acting world. And so it was both sides of it. Yeah. It was the true, actual, like, um, realities of trying to be an actor in an L- L.A. and the true realities of being a hitman. And just, like, the dark underbelly of that, the violence of it, um, but then just, like, the funny, quirky, like... It's really fun to just have this actual life-and-death stakes put up against what people view as life-and-death stakes Mm -hmm. every day in L.A. And so just that juxtaposition and with Henry Winkler and Bill Hader, uh, Stephen Root, NoHo Hank is my favorite character. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, it's just... it's. Phenomenal! I highly recommend. That's it. so good to hear. Oh, I nice. watched the first two episodes and I was feeling mad about it. It gets it's really episode after episode four because I, I like I loved the pilot and then it sort of was like a come down and mm-hmm. then like it kicks back in. Okay, <clears throat> good. That, that's what I I was hoping for that. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just yeah waiting yeah. for no. someone to kind of confirm that. For no, me. It, it it does kind of lull, but then just jumps right back into it. Mm-hmm. It's insane, and but I loved it. Okay. Oh, nice, cool, Cameron. Chris, I was gonna save this for next week because it was very special for you. Oh fuck! I no, it's a good, it's a oh, good, okay. it's a good special. <gasps> Wait, did you read DC New Frontier? I finally, I'm <gasps> almost done. I have like 30 pages left of New Frontier. Wow! I <laughs> you don't even know how they beat the center? No. <laughs> I legitimately thought that My was going to be a the longest running bit in the run. <laughs> I, I was that was gonna be like. Like the Ross and Rachel of our podcast, <laughs> where the, uh, the final episode you finally read the goddamn comic. I I almost done with New Frontier. How good it's, is it? It's pretty good. How fucking good it's is pretty, it? It's pretty awesome. Boy, pretty good. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen. I'm reading it too closely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god. No, I love it. It's amazing. Wait, Darwin I Cook think, is amazing. If I recall, I think the version I got for you has all the um, has the stuff in the back too, right? Like all the has Darwin Cook's notes. I am not at the end yet. Okay. Well. Obviously, when you finish it, but go back and you can go through and you can go through every section. He talks about where the influences are, what the references are, okay. and pulls. Well, like, here it's so good. Does it feel like you have physically 30 pages left in the book? I probably have a little more than 30. Okay, then maybe it is that. Yeah. I'm just trying to give you a gauge of how you can figure it out without spoiling it. Okay. Or asking if you no, flipped no, yeah, the last I, page. I, I was, I was going to save it because like, I wanted to actually finish it before saying that yeah. I read it. Uh, but I don't oh have anything god. else to plug right now. Oh my god, I am so I am shocked and impressed. <laughs> yeah, wow. I needed something to make you feel better for all of my horrible references today. I greatly that appreciate that. I had to cover that. up my 18s joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great positive thing to end on. Yeah. Is now yeah. we finally have yeah. Cameron. Um, and we still have your bat plug. Yeah, what, we what finally, are you we watching? we, we, um, we watching jumped watching back I, from <laughs> Sasuke <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> I I, uh, <laughs> I I randomly. Felt like watching the other day the producer's musical movie, just because I love musicals and I love Nathan Lane. And it's not great, but I always have fun every time I watch it. Um, the The problem is I've had springtime for Hitler stuck in my head <laughs> for about a week, which is bad when you just start like humming it to yourself. As a, as a blue-eyed, <laughs> blonde hair man. It's not good. <laughs> it's not a good call <laughs> at all. Uh, also, fun fact, John Barrowman is, is, the, is yeah. the lead tenor. He's like yeah. the main oh. singer yeah. during the springtime for Hitler sequence. He's, he's the blonde hunk. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so fantastic. Um, but that's a fun movie, guys. It's real fun. But uh, yeah, also, just piece of advice, don't go around singing springtime for Hitler. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Not, not, it's going to be not today's struggle. world. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's in there now. Yeah. yeah. Mein Kampf. <laughs> Very good, right? Yes, right. <laughs> um, All right, so we can finally wrap this up. I, th- I think we, we can finally it, do it. Yes. Uh, thank you for listening. As always, we rambled about this. Um, if you want to reach out to us at Tim Talk, we are at Tim Talk Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Gmail. I am personally at Lordifer on Twitter and Instagram. 
Uh, I, uh, if you want to see my art, you can find it at Cameron.Dexter on Instagram. If you want to see my face, it's at CamDexter underscore Adventures. Uh, and if you want to see my t-shirt business, it's at Core Memories Co. Boom. Yeah. Look at that. And Frank. your nudes? And if you want to see my nudes, it's at Live Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. You can follow Amanda the comic, at uh, the the, uh, the comic book novice. Mm-hmm. And where can we find your podcast? Oh, I don't want to tell you guys that. That's too personal. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't uh, mean to. Find us on iTunes at the, the Novice and Frank, where okay. all great podcasts reside. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the bad ones, too. That's true. <laughs> yes, and the bad Very ones. Very true. Um, I, we, the podcast of two worlds. You can find us on, uh, iTunes where all great podcasts are found <laughs> to share all that stuff. Um, I am personally at, uh, Trevor Copter and our podcast is at PO2W underscore flash on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, Chris Van Brest does not have. He has no social media. You can't I'm, find him. I'm not convinced he exists. Yeah. I think he's made up. Why don't you get him one for his birthday? <laughs> Just get him, a, get him an Instagram. Get him, get him a, a social media handle. So I'll try it. We did establish one time during one of these crossovers what his handle is. It's like some weird Benicio del Toro reference, but he said <laughs> he he mentioned it as we were like doing plugs. But he said at. So he's like, you can find me at Benicio del Toro's like sex ranch or something like that. <laughs> so I need to find out what that is and establish it as his Twitter. Yes. yes. I just assumed it was him reading the line from The Usual Suspects, but just like you did, like, and until I was like, yeah, 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 Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, it, all, it all ties back. together. And Avengers. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, shit. Look at that. Can't escape the Avengers. Yeah. yeah, so we'll be back in two-ish weeks to talk about uh, the Incredibles, Incredibles 2. 2. Can't wait. <sighs> oh, man. I know. Hopefully it lives up to the name, the hype, oh, the God. glory. I know. I can't, Chris, I can't go through another Tomorrowland. I know. I know, I, Cameron. I can't I know. do it. It'll, it'll My break heart you. can't it's, handle. It's okay. I, it's Brad Bird in animation. I know. Yeah, it's not true. Brad Bird live action. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Cameron, your heart will go on. All those Mission Impossible movies good, though. And that's yeah, true. That's, true. that's yeah, true. Actually, quite good. That's true. I, I take it back. I have nothing to console you. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts so much. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. All right. That's right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>